by France. And, and it's just trying to eliminate those errors. Yeah, and what we'll see throughout the weekend is teams that are confident to be in defense, to hold that line and wait for the mistake to occur. Yeah, of course, uh, World Rugby big on anti-doping and uh, the Keep Rugby Clean uh, campaign right across the world and uh, good to see. Good switch play there by uh, Brazil, Juliana Estevez. Gets the inside ball now. Stunt suddenly some linkage for Brazil. Ishibashi up to the uh, halfway line. She's isolated though. Saga has to go in. Free ball for Australia and it was snapped up by Charlotte Caslick. Yeah, it may have looked like she was offside there, but as the tackle, she had rights to try and play it. Stay in, Shannon, stay in! Shannon Parry tries to go down and ball. Brazil no, really competing in the contact ball. here. Number one. Yeah, and Shannon Parry's off her feet, not able to play that ball. So Brazil just having a quick look at their bench to see what the call may be for Chris Neal. Paula Ishibashi, but uh, the halftime the Hooter had gone. So Australia but well in command in this set uh, opening. And the score, tie between Australia these two teams in Pool B, Australia 19, Brazil 0. Yeah, and it should be expected. Uh, what a remarkable record for Australia this year on the series. They played 18 and only lost three matches. Two of those were the finals to New Zealand that we saw in the opening, and one in the last tournament uh, against the US in Atlanta. So the side that's won a lot of rugby games this year, and let's have a listen in to see what Tim Walsh has to say in the huddle. <coughs> Good? Yeah. Okay. As we said before, we've gone three or four phases on a number of, number of occasions, okay, and then we've scored a try draw. If we stay composed, hold them to the ball, okay, they're going to break, right? But our, our ball retention, okay, they're going to fly in three or four around there. Okay, so we've got to win it as soon as we got a leg drive, then nine clearance, get it out there and flash. Okay, great spot, great the eight, eight, seven and nine, we can play the ball and run. That's a rubber surface, the ball is going to stick to six, and it's going to be quite the right over. Okay, the big one here is around as you'd expect, Scott Gray is in control of this game, of course, this is what will be now. on two days in a row they have to do that but first of all for the english it's uh, leanne own end of the field coming across and making a nice hit maria ribera wearing the 12 for spain riley scarrett Outside, got a hop and a motor, and let's see how fast Amy Wilson-Hardy can go. Pretty quickly, and then uh, Patty Garcia over to bring her down and hawk after the ball. Meanwhile, center of the field, 
Joe Watmore and then off the hands of Chamberlain. Yeah, looking for Abby Chamberlain there, not concentrating, but Spain had come offside trying to put England under pressure. So really fortunate there for England. Joe Watmore putting it across. And there's a lot of history between these two teams. Maybe not much in the World Series, but European Championships over the years. These two have often been head-to-head -head in finals, so a lot of history. Richardson sends it high. Del Pon can't grab it. Meanwhile, Casado looks for it, but to touch it goes, and it's going to be tossing it up high. An opening blind side. Holding on too long, and the turnover goes to England. Back they come. Richardson looks at Riley, gives to Leanne. Leanne might have found a gap for a second. That closed down. Had a couple outside of her, so a chance now. Will it be too little, too late? Watmore, Wilson Hardy, Dynabomb. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, good continuity for England. They're not having to try anything too difficult at the moment. They're just taking the ball forwards, challenging the Spanish defence, recycling quickly at the breakdown, moving it wide into the hands of Amy Wilson Hardy, into the hands of Joe Watmore on the other side of the pitch. Emily Scarrett at the moment, nothing too complicated, but it's all it's needed, it's all they're needing at the moment against this Spain team. 23-year-old Amy Wilson Hardy made her debut in Dubai. The uh, engineering student able to play the violin and yet still go out and not the England defense. England really just standing waiting for Spain as well, not pushing up hard. And in the end, all they had to do was wait for Spain to make a mistake. Riley, the take by Watmore. Back it comes to Richardson. Off to Skerritt. And Brennan. Brennan's got some wheels. Can she make it the distance? Coming across the pitch as Casado got one to beat. Now make it two and taken down. Enough support there or not? Might get the call for holding on. That is it. Yeah, a little bit lazy from That's England there. Work. Natasha Brennan going down the wing at pace. England thinking she's probably in, and there was nobody on her shoulder. If you make a break in sevens, you've got to have and your teammates on your shoulder. Score. You've got to get there. Had they been there, that would have been another try for England. A little bit lazy. When you see her bust like that, you got to get in line and get after her. They didn't do it. Nice run by Brennan, but all for naught as the first half comes to an end. A 12-0 lead for England in this full A showdown. Those two vehicles need to be moved right away, please. They are parked illegally on the stadium side. Thanks for coming. On attack. Just make sure we keep working hard to just give ourselves a little bit more depth, get the strike runners on the ball. I don't have to do too much in terms of fixing and whatnot. Just get the strike runners on the ball and let them have a dig. And what we've got to do is, once we've hit the pass, we've got to get after it a little bit quicker because we've got to get our B there a little bit quicker. The real contest been our floor work's been really, really good. All right? We might just get pulled with just like that last one there, okay? I think oh, that was waiting to happen. Get it back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's work to get it back, okay? But well, let's really work, stay on your feet as well in the contact, but let's really work to get there quickly. There's three phases, okay, and it'll be there for us. All right, defensively, Keep pushing them off the balls. The, off the balls, the secret, yeah. Keep taking the space off the ball, so we've got nothing to come to. If they turn to go one way, do not yeah. knock off the opposite side. Push up. So if there's nothing there, they'll turn and come back the other way. And don't knock off the ball, can you? Defend the ball first, right? Don't make assumptions. There's nothing left. Nothing. Team. 12-7. Is what? Where in the Echeverria to be? A lot of pace Natasha Brennan's got. She cut in all the way from. This time England are chasing as well. They're following her and need the defence. There she far off. Nicely done. She was sort of a one-dimensional big flyer on the outside and the way she goes. Now she seems seems to be able to, you know, get into it a little more, can can kind of get into some collisions and yet still maintain a forward pace.
Yeah, she's played a lot of rugby in 15s at, 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 at centre and full back as well. So you know, really got into that contact area. Can mix it with the best in the tackle situation. So a couple tries for her and a 26 to 7 lead for England over Spain. About 80 seconds to go, and back comes England on the attack as Katie McLean, the captain of the Rugby World Cup champion 15 squad there, and getting loose is Mo Hunt. And hello, Mo, way to go. Yeah, Mo Hunt, uh, one of the quickest players on this England squad, will be playing in the sense of the park, so doesn't get as much space as some of the others, but give her a little bit of space, and she's got a lovely little bit of footwork, first of all, makes the space, then gets the ball in the left hand, big fend with the right hand, good finish. And McLean, got the kicking boot on today, just off the mark and pushing it a bit right, but still... The advantage uh, for England in this one has increased to 31 to 7. Deborah Harry's in the background. Meanwhile, in the foreground is uh, Katie McLean. Not really a blondie, but able to put it over to the side. Uh. <laughs> oh. I know you're at home, probably watching on worldrugby.org and cringing right now. And really, half of my job is just that. Uh, meanwhile, Paula Medin of España able to move it forward. And Barbara Pla standing out there all alone, taking 45 steps and not moving an inch. Meanwhile, Martinez to Garcia. Got Echeverria outside, but Yeto won't see it as it comes back the other way. Garcia to Rivera. Maria taken down inside the 22. Time has expired, but the penalty awarded to uh, Spain as the captain. Ellie Martinez. Martinez gives it off to Berta Garcia. Yeah, Spain did give up, did they? You thought they were in in the corner just now, but English defense watched it really well. In the end, Berta Garcia gets a brace, always there on the shoulder of the player who's made the break. Eli Martinez, I think, gets through, just gets dragged a bit. Berta Garcia, as we said, get on the shoulder of those players who've made the break and you will get the try. Conversion on through. Nicely done by Patricia Garcia, and that is your final as England in its uh, Pool A opener, taking care of Spain, 31 and to 14. Each day was fueled by thoughtful preparation for events yet to come, whether that be next Tuesday's bridge club or the precisely organized retirement that we are in. Friends Rugby Canada is excited to be hosting the Canada Pen 7s in March 2016 in Vancouver at BC Place. For more information about the next Canada Men 7s event, visit Canada7s.com. Coming up next, it's New Zealand versus Fiji. game here in Langford is New Zealand versus Fiji in Pool 8. 
We've just seen England in the same pool beat Spain by 31 points to 14. Well, Sean Horan makes three changes with Carla Hojipa, Charlotte Scanlon and Gail Broughton returning in place of Morgan Morrow, Alexis Tapso and the injured Ruby Tui. And it's uh, Scanlon and Broughton who get the uh, the starting lineup. Keep an eye out for number five, uh, Sarah Goss, a hard-working forward. And along with uh, Honey Hirimi, they have an absolute try scoring sensation in Portia Woodman who's already scored 33 tries this season she's the flyer on the wing well for Fiji I was speaking to their coach Alessi Tanavula and he really wants this team to be pushing for a quarter-final place here in Canada Felicia Vodo and Lavine Tinai Akosita Ravato will be ones to watch for the uh, Fijians but really, it's all about New Zealand. A 30-game winning streak as they take the field here at the Western Stadium City Centre Park as they run out towards the uh, the match ball. I'm Scott Hastings, alongside me, former England international Sue Day, and uh, Sue. Well, it's going to be interesting development for this Fijian team. Well, 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 you know, in the physicality states of this uh, wonderfully controlled New Zealand team. Yeah, it's a big, big challenge for Fiji. We haven't seen from them so far in this series enough organisation to challenge a team like New Zealand throughout a whole match. Yes, they string some brilliant sevens together sometimes, but we haven't seen from them a complete performance yet that lasts the full 14 minutes, and that is absolutely what they'll need to challenge New Zealand. So we've got New Zealand Fiji, and in the middle will be uh, a referee from Spain, Alhambra Nivas. So she's our match official. Unusual sight to see Kayla McAllister jogging off to start the match on the sidelines, not alongside her good mate Portia Woodman. Yeah, the uh, double trouble for New Zealand. Kayla McAllister, such experience in there, suck is over 500 points they've scored for their team. Goss is right up on the Angato. Now Fiji, they're going to have to attack from deep. It was a good line, but it was a knock on and picked up immediately by Salika Winiata. Osha Woodman, Woodman right up. Look how many players it takes for Fiji to bring down the uh, New Zealand winger. Brazier, Brazier has a little cut, and Kelly Brazier, she'll just go for the corner. What a start for New Zealand, what a start for Kelly Brazier. That's Number the way eight. to open the scoring for New Zealand. Number eight. Great finish from Kelly Brazier. That was all about, we talked about organisation at the start, slight disorganisation from the Fiji defence, a little dog leg, and that's all Kelly Brazier needs. She saw the centre just up in front of the 10, ran through that gap and she's in the corner. Such a good player, Kelly Brazier. Plays with her head up all the time, sees the space. That wasn't what was on, that wasn't what they were going to play, but she saw the gap. What made the opportunity, of course, was the New Zealand defence. We've seen it so often from them in this series. When they've got teams pinned in their 22, they play such a fast defence, really pushing, and Fiji knocked on under the pressure of that defence. Well, exercise on the pitch, exercise off the pitch. Winiata. She'll take the kick off uh, the Blackburn Sevens. She's had that uh, 12 tries to her name. So a try scoring sensation for New Zealand. Fiji once again. Tia Nyangato took the ball in that contact. So Fiji, well, it's almost like uh, Groundhog Day as they attack from deep once again. But look at the pressure coming on from this uh, Blackburn Seven side. Ball just dislodged at the back there. First look at Gail Broughton. Good to see her back in a New Zealand Sevens jersey. A wonderfully balanced rugby player. Yeah, Mr. Atlanta having got injured in Sao Paulo. She's probably the best step I've ever yeah. seen on a rugby pitch. She incredible change of direction. She's got the distance she gets with the step and the way that she can go from side to side. Really great to see. New Zealand uh, penalised there. So ball is Rutter Luba. 
with the Luba, puts the uh, little dink kick in, but Siniata, Winiata, sorry, picks the ball up. Frazier gets the ball. Route one for New Zealand, uh, hit to a high tackle there, called by referee Alandra Nivas. Oh, sure, Woodman just uh, caught high there. There's, uh, there's a tank, just a loose, uh, a loose arm there. Yeah. Three giving New Zealand good attacking position. Honey Hirame hanging out here on the wing, waiting for a first touch. Well, the shuffle in the middle was uh, Gail Broughton. She looked uh, to use those uh, dancing feet of hers. Goss takes the ball off her uh, her boot laces. Honey Hirame is in uh, to clear uh, to clear ball. It's a physical old game. <laughs> it is desperate stuff from Fiji trying to close New Zealand down and not give them space. Both teams trying to push up really, really hard in defence. Big defence here, girls! Big DJ! But still, Fiji haven't really got out of their own defensive 22 yet because New Zealand push up so hard in defence. They're out of options. Fraser looks on. Anna Maria Rongithas. She uh, fed the scrum. Ball picked up at the base there by uh, Ravato. So Fiji just under so much pressure every time they get the ball. So Lavina Tinai had to take the ball to the deck. Now oh, a mistake just pops up into the hands of Gil Broughton. Broughton with a dancing feet. Docks down. Lovely little individual try. The beneficiary of the Fijian era. Too easy for Gail Broughton. and she can score tries from much further out than that with much more difficulty involved. The ball just pops into her hands and she's over the line. New Zealand are pushing up so hard on Fiji. They're pushing all seven up, so there is so much space in the field behind them. All it needs is a long kick from Fiji down the middle of the pitch, chasing hard. But at the moment, they're so intent on playing the ball out of hand that they're not seeing that option. Salika so Winiata adds the additional two points. New Zealand 12 0 up, and as you said, that so often defensively teams will put six up and keep a sweeper back, as you said, Sue. And um, well, Fiji have got to learn and understand that and use that space if it's there. And of course, New Zealand will keep doing it until Fiji see the gap there, so they'll keep putting them under pressure. Winiata with just the, uh, the small dink kick. Uh, Fiji, well, we know their men's team are so well drilled in the uh, the passing and the skills can their ladies team emulate there's a wrong that comes back against the green look again new zealand pushing up now here's an opportunity over the halfway line is tina but she's brought down steps inside and Levina how the girls manage the tactics on the field of play so an englishman coaching in fiji Ben Ryan, he's had a few words with this team. Yeah, they're on such a steep learning curve, this team. They haven't been in the, the first season fully in the series. Now, Gatto was up with the, uh, the chase. Uh, here he just steps off her left peg, strength up to the halfway line. Well, a marvellous tackle by Anna Maria Rogiva. Frazier just puts the little chip kick in. Up to the 22, look at it bouncing on the surface, is it? Falling into the hands of New Zealand. Fiji are back there, covering well. Mama Ravisa, but it's New Zealand with the attack. Good passing here. We'll find on the outside channel, Honey Harimi, who steps back in, has Goss on the outside. Goss will just go for the corner, shows the ball, and she has enough presence of mind to get over the line. She made it, I'm not sure how much the defence believed in that subbing, but it made her enough space to power over the line. Good finish from Sarah Goss, always there, the captain when her team needs her. There, Hiromi cuts inside because the defence is streaming across, gets the ball out to Goss and it's coming, there's the dummy inside. I'm not sure it really held up Nangato, but either way, Goss is over. So the conversion is uh, unsuccessful. Half time then, three tries scored by New Zealand. One converted, 17 to seven. Score, they lead Fiji. 17, Fiji seven. <laughs>
Tunda wis sama telepon tu panca panca pati kecil itu 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 mau begin. Gus perintah mu itu mentera mana? Kalau mau lutalan bangko? Iya, itu mau lutalan mana? Iya. Ini semua wakon beri ya. Ini semua wakon beri. Itu belum jenis perintah kita telepon ni. Kemarin mentera mana pol? Mungkin dia tiap. Kutu bantu tak kalian lulus orang lulus pol. Itu bantai sal super tor tu. Kemarin mentera mana pol? Set. Tu saja. Malai, malai, malai ni aku kotal, aku kotal, aku kotal lagi. Rau, rau. Tunggu anda. Tunggu ibu suka. Tunggu malu, seberat, seberat. Tunggu mau nak. Tunggu malu. So taxi night runners is played over the PA system. One Solomon concert zoo in Newcastle upon Tyne in England. What a great concert that was, and what a great theatre this is as well. Great atmosphere for uh, Rugby Canada and uh, a healthy crowd. Uh, not quite full yet, but uh, there'll be three and a half, four thousand people in here later on this afternoon. Come on, Eileen, that was another great song, wasn't it? Some of the best. Well, the, uh, the kick was uh, taken. Here's a look at Broughton once again. Up she goes to the halfway line. Gail Broughton tackled on that halfway line and holding on to the ball. So penalised. Quick tap restart for Fiji. Now, what's in the uh, the making of Anna or Litia Nangato? This is Ophir Safu. She takes the ball up to the 10 yard line. There's Nangato, she's wearing the, uh, the headband. Look how hard she's working to get the ball back to her fellow colleagues. A little bit flat line on uh, Fiji there. There's it Siata. Good angle of running coming from uh, Rotomuva. Tinai, the try score. Tinai, she'll go down the wide outside channel. Can Tinai go in the corner? She can! And this brings Fiji back in with a real chance in the second half. Wonderful individual try. Lavinia Tinai showing her strength and power on the outside. Fantastic finishing skill from Tinai. There she goes. She makes it all herself. The show and go. Then the power. Then the handoff on Sariku Iniata, then takes it all the way under the post, so they've got the best possible chance of conversion. What a fantastic finish. Fiji taking it to New Zealand now. Some really big pieces of contact. Nangato being really key to them, taking the ball forward, challenging the New Zealand defence, getting them on the back foot rather than the front foot. And Tinai there, finishing it all off. Wake up time for New Zealand, it's 17 points to 14. It's game on here at the West Hill Stadium between New Zealand and Fiji. What a cracker we've got here. Nangasai, the ball was picked up there by Hazel Tubik. Tubik gets the support of Broughton. Broughton just spins, turns, has to go to deck on that 10 yard line. Goss to Winiata. And Winiata to Honey Hirimi. And Hirimi, can she make it and polish off? She shrugs one, she gets the inside pass. Wonderful support play from New Zealand. Salika Winiata drops the ball down, and it all came from an immediate response from the Fijian score. New Zealand got the ball into the hands of Honey Hirame. How she hasn't had the ball in much space, but this is what she could do when she does. Shrugs off the tackle, stays strong. Pinpoint pass to Siliko Iniata, who finishes it off at a quite a late challenge there from Siata. But Honey Hirame, so important to New Zealand to have that fast player, the fast prop on the outside. Honey Hirame, sometimes it's Carla. Having rugby leaves him for the tackle, got in for the try. Support was it Carla Hohipa? Up and she has done well on the Sevens World Cup with five tries in her career, and she gets one to open things here. And the conversion attempt by Jordan going to be off the mark. 
Now the USA still holding a 7-5 lead, but a quick strike by South Africa as the Renfrew Dazzles crew right back in the match. On the restart, Jordan picked up by Kelly Griffin. Griffin runs into Heldenheim. Johnson tries to take it out of there, does. Doyle with it. Doyle finds a gap, and Doyle has one person to beat on the race. I don't think they're going to catch Doyle. Lauren Doyle is going to give the United States an even bigger margin with five more points. Going for the United States, number six, Lauren Doyle. Well, there's too much pace in this American side. If the South Africans don't defend properly, and you'll see here, simple first phase ball. She steps, she sees the hole in the green jerseys, and, the and then pushes off her right four, foot. It shows great form. Rick Suggett's team, of course, preparing at Chula Vista in Southern California, the Olympic Training Center, and she looked like an Olympic sprinter there taking this one in for the U.S. Zanae Jordan, I mean, is an excellent player, but once she allowed Doyle to get up with her and make it an even match now, then she's not going to win that one. Doyle had, a, as we saw in Atlanta, just as a sweeper against Australia, had three huge saves coming across with a big Roomba. Johnson taps it in the air, but that was probably before the uh, 10 meters, so it goes to South Africa. Of course, Sevens Rugby, the team that scores, does kick off, and that ball needs to go 10 meters over the white hash line there. It didn't, so South Africa will have a chance to run a set piece. Scott Hastings tells me that all the time, and I still don't believe him, but now you're telling me, so I guess there's validation on that. Our go, go, sevens, and he is assisted by another guy that certainly had a very good Sevens career, Paul Delport. Less than a minute to go in the first Yeah, great mind, obviously, starring for the Blitzbach of the men's Sevens team, one of the best in the world for many years. 14-5, the United States, with 41 seconds to go in the first half, and once again getting free is Vix Belayan. And Falayan is Falayan by everybody. There goes Vix. See ya. Going for the only the referee Number in shot. Barely crossed the halfway line the South Africans and another defensive lapse from them. Falayan with a big grin. There she was, just stood up her defender grind in and out. And a missed assignment there by the South Africans not playing Player on player and the there. Is good by Layla the Lion enjoyed that one. Kelter converts, and meanwhile, you look at uh, the Lion. I spoke to her yesterday. Uh, drama and psychology was her uh, was her studies at Stanford. I said, really, aren't they the same thing? <laughs> and she looked at me and said, no, and then dismissed me. But uh, she employs both of them here, getting uh, the Blitzbachers to think where she ain't and then putting on a show. The beautiful high hanging restart that does go 10 this time. Time has expired in this first half with the U.S. Two minutes. All right, stay tuned on your penalties out so they can't boomerang on us, okay? So push legs on, onto the field. Push Eagles on three, they can one, two. Out there. And if that's not enough, we're getting psyched up over Van Halen, right? <laughs> yeah. We're also getting psyched up for later on today, not looking past anyone. But uh, our last game of the day at 6.50 p.m. on the West Coast will be Canada versus USA. Kelter with the restart to the right side. Taken cleanly by PNR. Coming back, South Africa. Working it near side, there is the try score. Got to. Inside, she gives to Grime. Simmers. Held it nice. A little bit lateral in her running lines there. Talk about uh, being CrossFit ready. Well, if you're in defense and you end up holding the shoe, you know you haven't really done the job. There she is. 
Kind of interesting that she had to do that try within the allotted time, and so she couldn't. Her plant foot was a uh, was a fuzzy sock. Yeah, and she was one of those subs we talked about. Zachary's on the field now. Fresh legs for Rick Sackett's team. Yeah, Kate Zachary wearing the 11 from Benedictine College. We saw her debut in Atlanta and scoring a try, and there she is contesting for that one in the air. And that's the only change at the moment. As Kelter still trying to untie the knots on her boot. So this one pretty much going to form. U.S. would have been the favorites coming in. But a fascinating pull with Canada looming up next and against Russia. And Russia's side that have great talent. They can beat anyone. So uh, U.S. and Canada have to be very careful not to look past them. And I think it's going to be interesting uh, day one here in, in this Pool C competition. Jordan pounds one downfield. Big and chase. Baravalala is there. And so was uh, Novelli. Bowie gets it off to Zachary. That ball should have been passed. Sucked in the defenders. Johnson swings it out wide to Falayan. Falayan cuts a gap. Pianar with the takedown. Vix with the presentation and yet running over the top appears to be South Africa. We'll see the call. The knock on and the scrum to the USA with three minutes and 20 seconds to go in this contest. Uh, the USA holding a 28 to 5 lead. The credit to the South Africans there for not quitting. It was Maritha Pienaar getting across, making a good tackle. It will be scrum time and another sub. Lorinda Brown putting in at scrum half. Irene Gardner wearing the nine into the contest. She's about to roll it in. Beautiful setting, West Hill Stadium. In Langford, British Columbia, this is stop number four of the six stop. World Rugby Women's Sevens World Series. The USA in white. Up 28-5. Kelly Griffin, UCLA Bruin. Away she goes. Will Gadu be able to chase her down? Griffin being taken down by Gadu at the 22, but has some support. Doyle. Get the uh, pass from Gardner. And then Falayan to Barrow Valala. A dance, a chance, a chance dance. And yes, it's going to result in five more for the USA. Going for the US, number five, Barrow Valala. She's been doing a lot of work off the ball, not getting the glory. This time it's her moment as that ball pops up to her. Good counter ruck from the US. They got possession. The show go and a big fan, the big right hand coming out. And Barra Valala, very popular try scorer. The product of Hawaii said, Aloha. She did. A couple of years ago when she was on the squad, so much hope for her, and yet the injuries came along one after another. Now back and healthy, and Rick Suggett and the Team USA really. Uh, Getting the benefit of her skills. And of course, this tournament, Canada Sevens, is uh, in Victoria, British Columbia, about two hours north of Seattle, where there's a huge Polynesian community. So, Rebby Rugby's down there doing great things. And uh, there's a lot of Americans cross over the border to watch this one. So that'll be a popular result right now with this one, the USA in charge. Faravalala, the restart, and Jackie Creel wearing the 11 into the contest there's for South Africa. Brown going left side, Creel with it. South Africa yes. finding itself down by 30. Yeah, good work, Mel. And yet, nice job by Kate Zachary. The 11 and the 10 into the contest, Melissa Fowler. And there was Rose LeBrest, the referee, blowing up for a penalty. It's power again and strength from the U.S. Vasi using her right hand this time. So the bench players playing their role. Joanne Vasi making her debut in Dubai with a couple of tries. The Sacramento native, a medical assistant. She is the seventh of seven in her family, and the family plays some rugby, so she's interesting they can play sevens. Well, we're starting to see from this American team that mix of pace and power. The last two tries really on strength. Is, tries the extra two, just pushes it in front. 
And that's what we'll see in the next two days of action here at the Canada Sevens. And uh, well done to referee Rose Labreche, completing her first ever World Series game as referee. Good job. The USA rolls in its uh, Pool C opener with a 40 to 5 victory over South Africa. Canada at the Rugby Awards at Government House here in Victoria for Russia. We'll keep an eye out for Nadetsa, Kudinova and Ekaterina Kazakova. A little linchpin between 9 and 10. And you know this young lady here, Gareth? <laughs> yes, the uh, chairman's wife, a very fervent supporter of Canada. And a lot of people are waiting for this moment. The girls take the field behind Ashley Stacey. Of course, one big name not available for Canada in John Tate's selection, Jen Kish, but it'll be up to these girls in red to fly the local flag. <laughs> of course, we're in the, uh, the red. And Russia, well, they'll be wearing white on the right of your picture there. As uh, Amidova just takes a little sniff of the... Uh, well, whatever that might be, but <laughs> <laughs> referee Leah Barrard from the uh, USA. Big, uh, nice smile and a lovely welcome to both these teams that they take onto the uh, they've taken the park here. <laughs> <laughs> great conditions, great fun, great atmosphere. Hope you're enjoying it. Whatever you're watching online on worldrugby.org, why don't you tweet us at World Rugby Sevens and tell us who you think is going to win this tournament. So. The action has started. Karen Pakan. A little show. It's going to be a physical encounter, this one. There's Bianca Farella releases the ball on that wide channel. Brittany Ben. Now Ben up to the halfway line. Tackled by Anastasia Mureyamova. But illegally, and then the quick tap and go by Nadetsa Kudinova. Kudinova up to the halfway line. Thumping tackle comes in there. From Ashley Stacy. Stacy <laughs> packing a punch, turnover ball. Now Canada, can they make it count? The atmosphere is electric out there. Recycle possession. Kelly Russell, one of the most experienced players in this Canadian side. Down that far side. Brittany Benn once again. Oh, stepping in against the green is Kaelan Maleshi. She's in for the try for Canada. And listen to the rapturous applause throughout the ground. Well, they're going crazy here in Langford. Up in Williams Lake, just north of here in Kalaraji country. They're going to celebrate Kayla Maleshi being the first Canadian to score in her home event. Good step off her left foot, steps inside the Russian player and touches down. That was reward, Scott, for the Canadians turning defense into attack. They turned the ball over twice with big hits through the middle. Just Lane Landry missed the conversion and uh, oh, hey, Mount Royal a run in. So just the start the Canadians wanted. But credit, as you mentioned, Kelly Russell. Big physical presence, obviously a great 15s player. She did the hard work up front. Well, Hudson all round there. But Ashley Stacey, such influence there. The diminutive that uh, five foot one, 155. There she is. It calling the instructions, it's just a great reader of the game. A game of all shapes, sizes, and this one packs a big punch. Ball's taken on that far side by Anna Malagina. Malagina has to go to take. Look how hard Russia are working for the ball. Kudanova, Kudanova has a wee step. Her maiden name was a Yamat Sky by Zat Hamidova. Up over the halfway line. That's the second time she spilt ball. Canada, the beneficiary. Can they attack once again? Three on two. Straight line running. My Canada. That's the uh, Russian 10 meter line to the right of your picture there. 
A scrappy rocket that's been stolen by the Russians. Good counter rocking from them. Ilya Guziva. Guziva takes the ball back. Yeah. Move move up an interception there for Brittany Ben. And Ben is underneath the ball. And Brittany Ben scores a third try for this Canadian team. It was pressure from the Canadians that caused the spill ball for the third time this half. And Britt Brent pounces on it, drives the legs. Good try from her and good reward yet again for Canadian pressure. And an additional two points uh, is added there by Gislin Landry. And this Russian side, we know they've got finishers, but their skill is just in question. And that Canadian bench has got to be happy with the amount of free possession they're getting from the Russian players. Absolutely. You can't play seven-a-side rugby guards without the ball. And at the moment, Russia are coughing up that possession. And Canada are punishing Russia with three tries, two of them converted by Gislin Landry. Kazakova. Gets uh, the support of Guziva. Play pass then slips a little bit there is a Guziva. Guziva sprints up to the halfway line but tracking back. He's a good tackle. Oh, tremendous there by Ashley Stacey. So as well as the attacking chores, she can actually get involved in the defensive chores. Canada flooding the set contact area. Kudanova. Russia just starved at the possession. They're being competing at the breakdown. Kelly Russell comes across. Hamidova tries to go in to get ball. Here's Hamidova. Well, she's just got a simple run in. So a defensive lap there from Canada opens up the door for Russia. A great finish from Aminova. It was a tackle situation. Kelly Russell was competing for the ball. There it is. Watch as it pops out the right side, and Kamidova just sees it there. And no red jerseys in front of her as she picks this balls up. And uh, she's made up for that early error and got Russia right back into this contest. Anastasia Mouraimova fails to uh, convert. But this uh, young lady buys that Hamidova. Well, she's such a try scoring machine as well. That was her 45th try. 225 points she scored for Russia in events so far. This is her 10th Women's Seven Series event. Well, final moments of the first half here, Scott. So crucial in Sevens rugby. Who's going to make a statement here at the end of the first half? So Russell to Stacey. Now, a little bit of an overlap here, Karen Pakan. Stacey comes in to make the tackle. Look how strong she is. Bundles out the uh, Russian player, Anna Malagina. Well, it's been entertaining stuff. Where have the last seven minutes gone? It's Canada, though. They're out into a 19 to 5 half time lead. Yeah, excellent start, giving the crowd something to cheer about, which was something of a concern for Canada. The Russians will be ruining a few of those mistakes, but let's listen in here to John Tate Tuttle. Teams just have a breathe, just refocus, take that time. Really good start, ladies. Maybe just a couple things on the tack. As soon as that tack, we have to latch every time. Every time we have a latch, we get in a little bit of trouble, right? The, because it's not just the tack, we've got to put the person on and contesting that ball right away, right? So we've got to get on her before she hits the ground, number one, okay? The attack's coming, that's going to come. Defensively, we're watching, right? We're, three are working and four are watching, right? or three are uh, watching the other side. You've got to count up from the outside, push those numbers over, right? Stay in the A spot until we're sure. You can't commit until we know we're going to get ball or the turnover for sure, okay? Any loose balls, let's flick it, get it back, take advantage of the turnovers straight away, all right? Or advantages. Good job, ladies. Breathe and let's do it again. Yeah, very technical chat, chat there. You see the hands going in. Don't take concern about the latch, the, the player who's attached onto the ball. And also in defense, working harder. So let's see how that plays out. Well, just watching on the other side, Pavel uh, Baranowski, yeah. he gave his side an absolute roasting while John Tate was uh, speaking to us. So, Chuck and geez, here he is. Look at him laying down the letter of the law. Used to coach the, uh, the men's team with Pavel. 
And uh, such a great, passionate man. He is. I think the referees will believe that they're not getting it in the air. It's his players right now. It will be the captain, Ashley Stisi, calling the three ball. Well, just looking on is Nadetsa Kudinova. Her maiden name was uh, Yamotskaya. And uh, certainly an outstanding player for this uh, Russian team. And yet another handling error from Russia. That's the skill level that on this circuit, the World Series is so competitive now, your skills must be impeccable because spilled ball is possession, and Canada has too many attacking weapons to give them this much possession. So here's Ashley Stacey. Look the way she just gets the ball into the uh, the tunnel. Out it comes. Now, Becca Ferreira. Jislin Landry, Landry, strong, powerful, stays upright. Hamidova bounces off her head. Kelly Russell goes back a bit, a bit scrappy in the midfield there. Yeah, it looked like Landry was going to get through, but she was just collar grabbed before she could make it. And the Russians have knocked on again. Midfield scrum, good attacking opportunity. This side worked so well together between Stacy. And Landry, they, they feel each other out there. Oh, there's Farella on the uh, channel, has steps back in off her right, gets the support. Maleshi, Maleshi holds on to the ball. She was allowed to play it because she wasn't held within the tackle. Canada working the short side. Karen Pakan goes in for the try for Canada. Well, this has been a good performance from this Canadian side. Russia are no pushovers. And Karen Packer, high five all round. Karen Packer from Quebec was a huge force in Canada's big run in the 15 aside game, getting to the World Cup final this summer. Here she profits from loose ball at the rock, as you said, keeping possession, not having to release. And watch Packer as she picks and goes up the short side, breaks the tackle, drives the legs, and gets her first try of the Canada Sevens. Well, Karen, uh, Gareth, I was looking down at my, my notes and I made a little bit a wholehearted footballer and he, she brings plenty of experience to this team and certainly that was the epitome of that particular statement. The conversion is good. And at 27 years of age, she's an experienced head out there and there's been a lot of pressure on these women as we've mentioned. You know, extra sponsors on board, extra signings, extra commitments and uh, can have done well to keep their focus here and are in the driver's seat in this first match of their Pool C action. Well, one of the sponsors at uh, the Bootshank Gardens is uh, one of Victoria's uh, proudest uh, tourist attractions here. And the most beautiful layout on those gardens. They've been great supporters of this tournament, great supporters of Canada Sevens Rugby. Russia trying to break out through Kazakova. Switch play. Oh, good ball, the late drop and the big handoff. Arm is hard by Fevalova. Have a little bit up to that 10 yard line. Well, Hamidova, she'll need some sticky stuff on her um, her hands, but look at the power. Good tackle that came in on the uh, far side there. Yeah, and it was good work. It was a substitute, Lisa Allery, who had the presence of mind to keep her feet, get back on her side, and try and poach that ball. And uh, Hamidova was guilty of getting isolated there. Ashley Stacey just slowing things down a bit here is uh, Stacey, she's mistouched though. There's the death of that Kudanova. Uh, 23 tries to her name, 243 points. What can she do to spark something for this Russian team? Well, they're changing direction and angle well at the moment. Well, a bit of a rush pass. But this set, uh, 34 tries. Ekaterina Kazakova, she's well marshaled. Well, the Chiva comes in. And then Maria Shemchuk. And look how hard that uh, Shemchuk is having to work with within the contact situation. Russia, that's the uh, halfway line. Oh, lovely little show. Kudin over. Ball bounces favorably. The kick goes in. Hamidova's got pace on the outside. Paka, I don't think she can. Look for the Russian, 
footballing skills there. Ducks the ball down. Hamidova is in for the second try for the Russians. And that was a good kick through in chase. The pack out was chasing, but Hamidova showed great presence at the line. This watch is it doesn't quite get over the line. She has to nudge it with her right foot. And then there's a moment where it's untouched, but that big left hand comes out. And Hamidova scored as she's done so many times on the circuit. Maria Fevelova from the uh, Russian Academy making her debut here. This is the uh, additional two points. Yes, Scott, and I know that's one of the things the Russian group is very excited about. The Academy players that started at 15 and 16 are now pushing through into the team, uh, Lushina and Fevelova. Good examples of that. Fevelova, the 19 year old then from the uh, Moscow region. We'll have the uh, restart, the instructions given. Wearing the scrum cap, gets plenty of height. Fivilova on that kick. Bounces uh, into the uh, double try scorer for Russia. By Zep Hamidova. One minute left in this match. Well, Canada have competed really well in the, uh, the close contact exchanges there. Shina on that far side. Good press defense from the set Canadian team. Superb tackle that came in there for Ashley Stacey. On the dead set, Kudanova. She uh, splits the Canadian defense. Farella's not going to near, get near her. And Kudanova scores a 24th try on the Sevens World Series. Well, classic one on one play from her. Kudanova shows the ball to the right, steps off her right, and then she's through. These are really important points for Russia because you never know what could happen in this pool. Points difference does become a factor as we determine the top eight teams to go through quarterfinal play for day two tomorrow. Well, that just uh, puts her over 100 points for the season, so uh, a very good playmaker for this uh, Russian team. Oh, oh unlucky. Conversion uh, ricocheted off the upright. So there's that final whistle. Uh, Canada off to a cracking start here in their own tournament in Langford in beautiful British Columbia, Victoria. Well, Kayla Molesi signed there, says she rocks it for Canada, and she did with the first try of the day. That was a great moment. And then Britt Ben driving hard with the legs, showing the power this Canadian team possesses. Very physical this match. Sorry, Scott, but it, the Russians brought a physical challenge, didn't they? I was just going to say there, they had to work so hard, but Canada were right up into the Russian faces, denying them a lot of pressure. Also putting on a lot of pressure, Gareth, where Canada then benefited from turnover ball. They did. They capitalized on turnover ball, but at the end, it was two Russian tries that may prove very important as the rest of this tournament plays out with the USA and South Africa involved. Great strength thrown there from the Russians. Daria Fevelova, and the crowd happy with that uh, victory for the Canadian team, and well, what a superb turnout from the uh, the locals here. So let's have a recap on this morning's action. It was New Zealand who got off to an impressive win over Fiji by 38 points to 14. Likewise, England squaring the pool with a win over Spain in uh, Pool B then. Australia were looking mightily impressive against uh, Brazil, 43 points to nil. France also nilling China. And then finally in uh, Pool C, we've just seen uh, both the United States and Canada win their opening games. United States by 40 points to five. Canada, 26 points to 15. We'll go and pop the kettle on or do what you like to do. Go and cut the lawn, but come and join us in 45 minutes for the, uh, the next games. Remember, friends, you can stay connected with all your rugby Canada news, scores, features, and announcements by liking us on Facebook. You can
and also follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Get all your latest news and ticket information for all Rugby Canada events at rugbycanada.ca. Rugby Canada would like to thank Canada's Gary Farmers for their support of the Canada Women's Sevens Tournament. The Newly Women Champions is the presenting sponsor of the BC High School Girls Rugby Sevens Championship Finals here at West Hill Stadium and has brought hundreds of fans to this incredible event.
We have something of yours. William, to the announce booth. Thank you. Six started with a 29 20. 
on down to third. Good to go. I was a little bit happier after Canada getting that big result. Uh, big win. Yeah, I guess. That aren't playing, aren't in the starts. Of course, uh, played uh, sevens rugby for uh, Gordon Titchizzo will be in the gold. Uh, yeah, they'll be improving so when they get on home soil, they can put up a, a great effort in the 12 women's seven. Jess Barrar. Beard, I should say. I'm mixed. I'm one uh, down. Uh, gone and France possession. Le Duf. Uh -oh. and Step and move by Shannon Izar. The uh, Shannon. Ah! Izar. Opening. Brazil chose the one. France. And Shannon Izar. Goes 90 meters. There's a great fend off. Where's that right bar is there? You gotta put it on that drop. Nizar had a try against here. Ledoux off the mark. Star. Teammate. Rojo. Now let's sit out of there. And, uh, on the bounce. Left side for the captain. <laughs> there and Sarda taken down. Pressure really on the far side by and actually a little slow. And a nice by Arojo. The ball side because of a knock on. It actually wasn't tackled, but uh, great tackle there. Perfectly. On Brazil, back to the field. Ramon and Yeho Khan. Angel line. They're really wide, right to the touch line. But they don't have the skills to get the ball there. Pass that hasn't gone to hand and, and is sort of snuffed in. Ball with a little heat. The hand size can emulate some of the moves. That, that gets blown up and now Brazil. She's penalized for rolling with the ball, which is something the referees are cracking down on. Leave. Where in the uh, pretty Sarda? So just a bit. He's at the moment. She's using the same technique, kicking over to a crowd here. Amy Langford. Behind us, at least on our side. Expect crowd. During the court, this is our second round of pool games. USA and Canada, Africa. The outside. Yep. Oh. It's got up. Benny Or watches it go to Romalo. Decides against the good sandwich. Coming in yellow jersey. Base, but the, the physical side is so important in your collisions. If you can't see. To Romalo. Bizarre in the air. Yeah, maybe not the and use catch and then star. The French side ended it is Leduc and Chris <laughs> the corner and in. Well, Leduc gets the for this team. She set with great feet. She's down. This is the end. Leduc shows inside and then takes it the outside. And uh, Sarda can't turn to touch. Touchdown. Once again, Fanny Horta here will. The heart of every. Oh, oh. They've been assembled, taking in the sights down of Victoria. Getting, getting. And they're really desperate to get points. All right, comes France. Oh, Le and say hello to Paul. So, number four. I'm going to have a go. Whistle goes. Down there, watch your head. What's up? Actually, it's on my lap. Simply five foot to get over that line, and five is the getting the ice pack is the Bobigny Biscara. Think France over Brazil. The ice pack's going building here. To 10 p.m. in the afternoon, and uh, they're on the field here. Back rubber, that heat. 
D'abord, quand il vite et on ne lâche pas, on fait elle fait parler ses gens. On reste sur quoi ton bras. On reste sur le France has had its way so far. One half against Brazil. And Brazil hosting the 2016 Olympic Games and on fires for years on the kick. Here it is. And Brazil first chance with love. Well, maybe they don't. Come back here and put it. And now uh, slowing things up. They're in command. Play at their own time. 13 for France. Orta was looking at La Danius and Orta calls her own. Leaves it. However, it on the near side. Didn't come off for Fanny Horta, but the experience is still there. She didn't throw the wild inside pass. The Brazilians may have to get themselves right back into this game. So, although she it's possession given up, that option from her. Ishibashi, a rip away from that one. Good counter by. It was a tough call there. Oh, referee yeah. did on the side. Out of the run. An injury or some blood being tended to. Very immediately taken care of and cleaned out. Not like in the old days when World Rugby. A Brazilian around in the air. Spin it back the other. La Danielle. For Le Duff. Bouncing off and. Go. World Cup in the World Cup of Sevens and Fanny, the captain. Six. Well, often when the ball spilled on the big hole and and she runs it in. And the cover is complete by the fourth. So confident. If if France are going to pour a cup, and start to challenge the likes of New Zealand and Canada and Australia. Well, she's going to have to be at the heart of this because she's a fantastic tactician. Brazil grabs by them on a uh, restart. On all is very well. Yeah, a rare moment in a mall that's blown up. It was still advanced. It's moving, no? Yeah, Not look. fast enough. Checking in now for France will be Jennifer. And Lorianne Lassar. <laughs> Out comes Fan one of the try scores, the four, Pauline Biscotta. Opportunity for France. The first receiver strider out in the open field. <laughs> Romalo comes up and But Lena Garan on the French's shoulders. New Jersey. Back there. They didn't quit on it. Columbia University, a human rights minor. And Looks like five. I might have said, do mean France. They have the advantage at this point. Find a gap there, presents it. And then is the Claudia in the seventh. Santilli. It's to France and France the other way. Give credit to Tellis for making the because it's another try for France. Giglion, first name Elodie. Go to the side and Lorianne Lissard down in the corner. Edge penalized, yeah. After he's sharing it around. Lissard. And the Brazil. Do it, we do. Seven to five. It is. Victorious Brazil in this show. Gorgeous conditions here in the West Hills Stadium. Park next game up in Langford is uh, Australia versus uh, Australia lead 2 0 in the series. The last in Sao Paulo, Australia winning that one 38. We'll uh, take uh, control of this game.
This is match eight, World Rugby Women's Seven Series, and a pool B match. And we've been well entertained in the opening session. This is the afternoon session. And number eight jersey for Australia back in their green and gold for their cuts. To right. Deep into Aussie turns. He has the slip to 20. Back from deep. What three tries? Look at her go. Well, she may be a kick that one. Right, Roland. Yeah, when you're going at that sort of pace, you bring the ball into your hands and doesn't bobble along the floor. It was bobbling. Really difficult to control. As you say, when it's that round, probably a little bit to chase it further. She absolutely had pace. Defence, but a kick from... Hold on to the back. Liu Yang, the scrum here. Liu Yang. The strings for Liu Yang. Tackle though comes in strongly from Sharni Williams. Sharni Williams who really shone in that opening match. China in the short side. At the half. That's her fourth try to go on back of the hat trick she had against Brazil. That's the second one with Eve. There's one. Don't want that ball popping into it to Leah Green. Here it goes. First, then one coming here. Look after the ball in those situations. Like recent players, Blastovia, but in China, threw it into the hands of probably the most dangerous. It was also in World Rugby China. It's going to stand in a good stead. Yuan Yuan. Back is Su Shisha. She shot. Oh wait, they try and look for the spaces down the knee. Quick as a shot and shot. Aslick. Aslick had the running lines and middles. We call Beck. And Beck, who's got a this uh, line up for really short. Australia, so second try. She brings some great pace to this. Plays on the wing in the fifth to Amy Turn. And go. Ball dummy run, showing, so a nice little show and dummy there from Sunshi Shout gets the support of Ching. Shout goes in to try and get ball, but in comes Charlotte Cat over ball once again for the Australian to get to the offload, but the knock on here, turnover ball, which is uh, not backwards by Australia's Emma Tonegato. Well, we heard the option below us in the commentary box. Over there, they turn over the other, knock on, knock on, get a chance. Will they clear their lines or will they run it from here? Tremendous conditions in this uh, wonderful here at the West Hill. <laughs> the bouncing, the vigories of the bouncing rugby ball. The event moving forward. That ball. So here's Charlotte Caslet then from Corinne. Ball into the line. This back. And then again, look at the cut of the. Williams comes to green. Well, there's only one way that this girl knows, and that's. Posts. Strikes. Out in the back. The back's taken the line out. So the big, strongly angle. She goes, Amy. About it just now. One way across the pitch. Shiny Williams cuts it. Work. Got really intelligent. The right moment to cut that line back. Well, she's such a hard-working, running rugby player as well, and she's taken her side. Twenty-one nil lead. Chloe Dalton. They conceded twit to France, and that was across forty million. Bob. Another spill that. Although that, but look who's on. There, Elia Green in for an up to date here in Langford. That's her in this match. Intelligent play from Elia. See here, the ball picks it up again over the line. Again, that opportunity came from poor handling from Chuck that they're giving to each other just on helping the ball, leaving the ball up in the next player to take. 
Half time. You can listen into the half time huddle. So turn the voice. Uh, your tops of your. Go, work hard. So Tim Walsh here in Lang. So do you even know there's still another half? They've got a big match up. It's the ball. Turner, Turner, look at that. Angle once. Showing really pace. Steps. Nagato. Massive chores. Oh, Tanagato. Strip. Shout. And Tanagato scores a clap. Try for a stroke. On the shoulder, but Amy Turner did all the work. She there, she goes, powering through. She's not she's talked to the side special to them. Plays in always a bit of a there. She used her footwork for Tony Gatto's on her shoulder. Love 30 Australia out, and Australia really ringing the tune off. Amy Turner on the pitch. Seen them in the same squad throughout the series. You know, surfing Captain Shani Williams. China oh, possession. This is it, Lu Yan Yan. Ball pops. She just oh well, switched the play down this blind side. There was a pass to Nikki Etheridge, which wasn't of the best that we've seen from this. <laughs> yeah, unusual. That's a really good intelligent play before the pass. Long way time the pass. The effort not quite. Hands the time the pass, but the delivery wasn't quite. Is the polite way of saying it was a shocker. <laughs> <laughs> it's handed China possession. From Shan <laughs> Moved up. The wide. From the Chinese team, nice little dummy up to the halfway line. They go. Oh, lovely little step. Where did that come from? An opportunity to Zhao Liang. The forward pass was it. On says the is Yuan Mi. Better play from China. This will give them confidence. Taters Kar Yan, who spills the ball. So. Yeah. Coach Lu Shu Shui really was the kind of move the pitch back and forth, really an unfortunate. Great, it's the errors that are littering. Yeah, and it's pathetic pass lacking at the moment. Makes a bit trying to catch the ball under pressure. Oh, Kaslik goes the outside. Well, tackle, wasn't it? And that's yeah. like that, you know, cast China, Yang. The tackle. Is this she'll throw the ball in there? Is it Charlotte Cash Touch World Cup incidentally? We'll it's a real scrap in there. It really is. My uh, Etheridge. Now Alicia benching on the right outside channel. Finds Green. Tina has recorded fully. And once again by. Uh, China's destroy though and after the rugby football lovely little angle was made and uh, a forward usually for Tim Walsh with some of his and Parry there's but usually Tim Walsh starts with something approaching his favourite team for each tournament this Shannon Parry on the bench but this is quick on the bench get work for him the, um, that full There's standard lineup is match four coming up later on. This enjoying the wherever you are, you world runs. seven S or Canada seven running there. Oh. And Parry makes it look so easy when fire they can play some great sevens rugby. Yeah, that was good. Sevens, anyone the try line then? Got them, may have got tackled. So in the end, it ends up in the hands of Shannon Tani there. 
Get out of contact, Kaslik to parry. Seven. There, wasn't she? Australia have nilled that China by points to nil. They haven't conceded so far, Australia. So that's a favour with a win. They're on. And uh, they'll move on in this competition. Scarrett, England Sevens, and this Mary Berry. Go back to the bake off. 6,000 ish. I'm not sure about that. Just over. Good football. Obviously, Johnny Wilkinson. Three moment. <laughs> Pops over his shoulder. Very unlucky, I think, the knock on given against them. So, Packers, Staniford, and Wilson Hardy in together there on the push, and it goes England's way, and then they pitch it back over the head of Katie McLean. McLean finds Staniford, and then stepping through is Marley Packer. Hunt. To McKenna and Watmore. Watmore being tracked by Ravisa and Ravisa, the tracker don't work anymore. Watmore with her fourth try of the tournament. Very good, simple finishing from Joanne Watmore. She had a lot to do there. Early on in the series, she wasn't quite going for around the outside. Now she really has hit her straps. There she goes, gets the little, but doesn't he? Yes, there it comes. The fen comes out. I knew there was one. Feng comes out and she just glides over that column. Such a lovely balanced runner when she gets going. It is that stride at 5'11 when she stretches those sticks out. It's uh, it's tough to run after something like that and she can motor. The conversion is off the mark and take a look at Joe Watmore on the tries in a second place tie with Jeslyn Landry of uh, Canada. Restart, Breeze kind of catches it a bit and hooks it up in the air and Hunt. Very good work at the breakdown, Fiji. Very good, giving him no time to play the ball. Siata at the bottom of that pile. Nangusa, Tanai. Back and forth they go, and then Lavinia Tanai has Hunt to beat. Hunt can't make the tackle. And Tanai, say bye-bye, Staniford coming in on the angle. But Lavinia Tanai puts it down for Fiji. Tanai again, she's everywhere isn't she today against New Zealand, against England, against some of the most experienced teams out there, Lavinia Tanai, there she goes, the offload out of the tackle was a very very good one under pressure but then Tanai, she's off, Mo Hunt can do nothing about it, she's That's it. interesting though isn't it, imagine if she could have, if, if Fiji can have that power running for the full game. Single-handedly almost, she's taking on first New Zealand, then England. So once again, as we saw with uh, England taking on Spain early on, they got off to an early start, had a 12-0 lead, I think, at half, and then it got a little bit closer. Here, kind of similar. All of a sudden, it's a seven point. Yeah, these Priscilla seven. Priscilla. Destroyed in the same way that New Zealand did. Fiji hit back against New Zealand and then New Zealand just streaked away with it. England don't have quite that foul firepower. McLean and Watmore come off and Brennan and Richardson check in. Make it real interesting here if Fiji could grab one down here and go across as McKenna. Angusa.
One minute left in this match. A minute to go. Down seven. Fiji got any magic against England. Voto. Rangitha. Might make something happen. Nangusa. I'm thinking you might want to get rid of that ball there, huh? <laughs> the turnover to England. The to touch it goes. And the line out will go to Fiji, it appears. Quickly it's in, and look who's there. Sabu Asanati. Yeah, and will there be time for the conversion? Fiji are going to be in no hurry to make that conversion. Asanate Sabu didn't do uh, any favor to her team, I think. She pops over here and then watch the ball. Whee! They finally recovered it. Big conversion here. Can it even it up? Yes. Fiji. The shocker at the end as Fiji pushes Asanate Sabu over the conversion made and 19 all the draw between England and Fiji. And the final score, England 19, Fiji 19. A quick look at uh, Pool A, England with that draw standing on top of the table, but New Zealand with uh, the game coming up next against Spain, Spain languishing at the foot, but that will have done Fiji an awful lot of good as well. My name is Portia Woodman. I play for the New Zealand World 7th team and this is my 7th and 6th team. Porsche. A bit like a car, but I uh, just shortened it. Chocolate and lollies. <laughs> Amsterdam because I love the Europe um, environment and I love the canals. Probably my first game against uh, Aussie in Dubai. All the girls have trained pretty hard. I'd like to give myself a bit of credit. I trained a bit harder, I guess. We say bold, my idol. That's the fastest. Hey there, Porsche. <laughs> hey there, Porsche. So next game up in uh, Pool A, we'll see New Zealand take on Spain. 31 games that New Zealand have gone unbeaten. Well, New Zealand lead 4-0 in the series. They last met in Sao Paulo when New Zealand won by 36 points to nil. New Zealand, well, Sean Horan retains only three players from the starting lineup that beat Fiji by 38 points to 12. In come 
Carla Hohipa, Hazel Tubic, Tyler Nathan Wong, and off the bench is Kayla McAllister. For Spain, well, Irene Chiavon and Bata Garcia will give the team an awful lot of lead. But just to give you an indication of how tough Spain will find this victory, two players who play for New Zealand, Portia Woodman and Kayla McAllister, have scored 133 tries between themselves. Spain, in three years of playing on the series, have only scored 103 tries. So two players from New Zealand have outscored this seven Spanish players. And that is a tough ask when you're running out into an arena like this. I'm Scott Hastings. Alongside me is Gareth Rees, a Canadian star of 15s rugby. And uh, well, it really is a tough ask for the Spanish team. Yes, it is. The women in the black jerseys running out there. They're setting the standard. They're top of the table. They're best in the world. The Spanish team have a little bit of spark about them, but uh, they'll have a lot of work to do. Leah Barad is our uh, referee uh, in the middle. Here she is from the United States of America, Leah Barad, one of the uh, top international women's referees on the World Rugby Women's Seven Series circuit. Got a bit of a wind picking up here. Spain will be kicking into the wind. It's going from left to right on your screens. See if that plays any impact. Marini Chevon will uh, get the action off for the Spanish team. Bohipa just on the switch play to Sarah Goss. Sarah Goss, route one for her. Maybe a wee hint of a knock on at the base there, but uh, the pass was uh, delivered. Hohipa down the line, but well tackled into touch there by Spain's Berta Garcia. Ball still in play though. Woodman to McAllister. Well, it's a double act that uh, can split many a team apart, and here's the strength on that far side by the New Zealand team. Sarah Goss. Little show the ball, the wraparound play. Tyler Nitha Wong with a lovely little show and goal. Well, that's a super try, an individual try from Tyler Nathan Wong. The try for New Zealand, scored by number seven, Tyler Nathan Wong. Supreme confidence from the New Zealand side, moving the ball side to side. In the end, it was the 20-year-old from Auckland. As the loop around comes, she shows, she sees that the Spanish defender is too late coming across. And then she just pins her ears back. Good finish from her, but that was a result of the whole New Zealand team moving the ball, stretching the Spaniards in defence. So the conversion is successful, and New Zealand are out to a 7 0 lead. It's just what, a minute and a half on the clock so far. New Zealand spreading themselves out across the pitch and really just that talent laced across this team. There's that Portia Woodman on the set near side. Ethan Wong just overcooks that one a little bit. Goss tries to uh, get after it, but it's bounced out on the f with one bounce and into touch. Yeah, poor positioning from the Spanish there. You can always come forward to a ball, but you couldn't turn and go backwards onto that one. But it does go straight out, so they will have the line out. Berta Garcia will uh, win the number five jersey. Good little switch play there as Irene Chiavon goes to deck. So, ball on the attack for this Spanish team. We saw in the first match when New Zealand dispatched Fiji by 30 points to 12, how much pressure New Zealand put on their opposition. And once again, they were right up in the Spanish faces. They were, and that's a, a tactic of theirs, Sean Hearn. Very well-drilled side, very athletic side, and we'll have a Spanish player just getting a bit of attention here. But they use that defense as a form of attack. They take away the space, and you saw there the first receiver for Spain had no one to pass to. There's black jerseys all over them. Roberto Garcia last played in Sao Paulo. And uh, a little bit of a knee in the head, was it? Just on here. Yeah, yeah. catching it. 
Just an accident and she's restored to the uh, action. Played out uh, in the WPC Cup with uh, Waikato in October 2014 with Honey Harumi, who's on the bench to uh, the uh, New Zealand side. Sarah Goss goes in, she just picked up uh, that ball like a sweetie out the wrapper there. <laughs> Oh, lovely, lovely step and goal, Kayla McAllister. How good was that try from McAllister? It looked like Spain had stolen the head, indeed they had, but the ball was won back, as you said, Gotts scooping it up. And then just simple hands. And watch McAllister, one on one, on her toes. Oh, look at that, setting up the defender and then leaving her again. Beautiful stuff, and isn't it great to think we're going to see that kind of athleticism in the Olympics? And the Talanitha Wong. Pixel and Leo the set. Yeah. Well, Gareth, did you play a pair of boots like that? <laughs> Not quite. You've got big shoes on at the moment in the commentary <laughs> box, I uh, should add, viewers. I don't think I had that kind of footwork she just displayed. That was beautiful. It really is a, it was a little bit more food work. Just a little bit of exercise going on there. From the uh, New Zealand bench. Now, we start. Wong. Goss chases, catches it on the full, gets the ball, returns it inside, and New Zealand on the attack. Nathan Wong. Step and goal by Kayla McAllister. Look how powerful she is. Dive pass is good. Hazel Tubic. With the uh, wide outside to Huhipa. Carla Huhipa on that wide outside channel. Tackled in the touch, loses possession. Well, they're a balanced side. Huhipa knows what her job is to stretch that defense and take the hard yards there. She just pushed in the touch at the end. She's very strong on the ball. And you see that touch edge's flag glowing a bit. New Zealand have all the wind at the moment. Yeah, Huhipa, she won the World Cup with New Zealand in 2010. Beating England in that final. England, of course, won the uh, final in France last year over Canada. So McAllister to Woodman. Woodman, ball in two hands. Oh, just brushes off the attentions of Iria Echeverria. And in under the post she goes. It's just too strong for New Zealand and too strong for Spain. Well, it was only a matter of time before the two strike weapons. We just see McAllister, and now it's Portia Woodman's turn. Hey there, Portia. Look at that. In, out, and all the way around. Well, she's the highest points scorer on the series of all time. And the covered attempt is good by Tyler Nathan. You've got to say, Scott, she's setting on some records right now that will be very difficult to be broken. Up to 390, and it wouldn't surprise me if she broke that 400 point barrier in the next few minutes. Well, of course, you mentioned the 15s uh, World Cup that was in France this summer. You know, as dominant as New Zealand are in the women's game, they were knocked out early on and didn't make it to the finals. So uh, this whole series, the World Rugby Sevens World Series, a chance for them to, to make a statement about where they actually belong. And they are up at the top right now. Well, as you said, Gareth, uh, they have set the standard on a 31-game winning streak, they've won back-to-back -back titles. Oh, <laughs> lovely, lovely skill. Gail Broughton, she's such a balanced runner, isn't she? And Broughton, with that wonderful so Maisie sidestep, opens up the Spanish defence. A oh, big high five, and they'll be dancing in the streets of Taranaki. Beautiful stuff. Everyone's got a chance at uh, a bit of footwork. Just watch as she gets up on her toes. Boom. Shows angles. Oh. It is wonderful, isn't it? Conversion is good. New Zealand are in control of this Pule tie between, in the matchup against Spain. 28 0, they lead at half time. And that girl, Gail Broughton, with a wonderful individual try to close out the half. Well, there's no substitute, Scott. These girls are having fun out there. They're high-fiving. They're getting the job done, but they're also very, very serious and definitely clinical. Let's hear what uh, Coach Sean Horan has to say. How was it, Kelly? <laughs> How was that? Freaking awesome. Making awesome. Ty, how smart are we? Smart. Cool. How physical are we? 
Pretty good, eh? Mecca, you've been decisive there. We either give it early or you fucking hit it up, eh? Outstanding girl. Keep on going. Keep these standards going. Okay, we're going to make one change. Sorry, mate, you're off. Okay, Hayes, you're into hooker. Carla, working prop, eh? Shoulders on, working that middle, coming forward. Listen for Honey's voice. She'll direct you. Gail, I want more voice now. Okay, Ty, more voice. Let's step it up again, eh? You ready to go? Yeah. One thing. Well, apologies for any uh, bad language you picked up there. I'll have a little word with Coach Sean Horan later on. Just tick him off to uh, tell him just to be polite in front of his team. Yeah, he, uh, he's uh, jazzed up as well. That uh, pretty excited, and uh, they're all having fun out there. He's made a few changes. He's a tough taskmaster, you know. The, uh, he's not maybe the, a very popular coach in the sense of uh, buddy buddy, but he does demand a lot of these girls, and they do produce. Yeah, and reinforcing the positives there, Gareth, at uh, halftime, and just asking for his team to go out there and enjoy your rugby. And as well, we know when you're playing with confidence. It, uh, it goes with the flow, doesn't it? Yeah, and Honey Harimi's on the field, and she's a, she's a huge presence, so that'll be interesting to see how she fits in. Well, Hazel Tube just down below me, she's um, she has a favorite player, is Christian Cullen, and her favorite superhero is Batman, so. Oh, oh I'm standing on that far side. Out the air is Portia Woodman. Woodman has been brought down. That's the five meter line there. Strong from Broughton round the side, but well, her skills should surely be on the wider outside channels. Portia Woodman showing a great aerial skills there. And a, a bizarre play because it looked like the Spanish player must have been offside coming from the wrong side of the ruck. But referee uh, Barad has let it go, so Spanish lineup. So the call is made for uh, the Spanish throw on that far side. Good play for Spain. Finding better Garcia and Spain just up to uh, kick the ball. It'll be just a free ball to New Zealand. And, uh, you know, I'm just looking at the wind guard that's blowing down the space. Surely Spain, she's just been sticking that one down. The maybe chasing, playing some territory down in the New Zealand half rather than coughing up possession in the 22. Yeah, a little bit of kick and chase doesn't hurt when you're down just to relieve relieve things. Nice execution there from New Zealand. Tubic was in the line out. Woodman has a little stick. Kayla McAllister just steps and goes, shows. And well, it's the set. Devastating player. For New Zealand, score by number 12, Kayla McAllister. Kayla McAllister. Incredible. 58th try, 59th try, sorry, on the Sevens World Series. Yeah, look at that. Again, missed tackle this time from Spain. And uh, you're going to pay if you miss tackles. If you go for arm tackles, instead of getting the shoulder on the body, you're going to pay against the likes of William and McAllister. In the break, Scott was just talking to one of the high ups from the Canadian Olympic Committee, who's delighted, obviously, to see this tournament and the support that's here for the Canadian girls. But the other side of it for them that's so important, you've got the world's best, and right now that's New Zealand coming here to test other nations and, and test people. So uh, the Olympics is driving a lot of good things in rugby, and this, this Canada Sevens right now is one of them. Yeah, Michaela Blyden off the bench with uh, Salika Uniata. And Portia Woodman comes off, poor kick off. Mm -hmm. Not gone 10 metres, so Spain will have the tap and go on the halfway line. Well, she is human, eh? I think that's one of <laughs> the first mistakes for New Zealand in this match. <laughs> Kelly, uh, Kelly uh, Brazier, the only one uh, not to get off the bench so far. <laughs> Under pressure there wearing their number one jersey. Was, uh, Patricia Garcia. Big tackle comes in from Tubic. Look how hard Spain are having to negotiate the ball. Forcing the error. Kala Hihipa picks the ball up. Then this is Honey Hirimi. Hirimi for the corner. <laughs> Good tackle. Spain though came from Elizabeth Martinez. But they play on. Well, that was, surely Ooh. there was a knock on there, was there not? Yeah, the referee needs some help from her touch judge there, an assistant referee, if she hasn't seen it. And she hasn't seen it, so. No try, the pain continues for Spain. They're not even getting the rub of the calls. 
Leah Berard misses that one. It looked like it was spilled forward out of Harimi's hand. She gets it in the outside arm here, tries to fend, and let's see if she comes out on her own accord. Yeah, it does. That's a, that's a knock on and unlucky for the Spanish. Especially on a, a try scoring moment like that, you do expect the referee to get some input from the assistant officials. Well, the one thing about rugby sevens is it just carries on. Spain just have to accept the decision. New Zealand out to a 40 points set to nil lead. Well, he stuck 38 points on Fiji. Fiji's got 12 back on uh, this New Zealand team. Well, they've not lost since Sao Paulo where they were beaten by Australia in the final in uh, 2014. And well, Spain finding it tough here. They have been close a few times. A couple of teams dropping the ball over the line in the last minute. Uh, U.S. notably in the, in the last tournament. So uh, a few people jumping at their heels. But here we go, Spain. And then Shiavon, Shiavon up the touchline. Could she score and go oh. all the way? Oh, she can! Shiavon is in for the try on the far side. And look at the delight the Spain, for the Spanish. She have all backed herself the whole way. New Zealanders nipping at her heels. She gets the wide ball. She steps inside one. Goss can't grab her. She's pumping the legs. Last ditch effort coming across from Tubic. Not enough. And Shiavon gets a great moment for her and her Spanish side. Yeah. Irene Shiavon, what a great try it was. Well, if you enjoyed that one, why don't you tweet us and say, did you enjoy that one? <laughs> At World Rugby Sevens. Hashtag Canada Sevens. Well, this is one of the great things about a Sevens tournament. Obviously, the result in this one is probably a foregone conclusion. But the fans were cheering for that as loudly as they were in one of Woodman's and when, when you think Honey Harumi, who scored a try rather fortuitously, well, the reaction for Spain to come back and nail a try like that, the first try that New Zealand have uh, conceded here in Langford. In this match. Oh, just <laughs> absolute class. Look at that. Gail Broughton streaks up the touchline. Has a little hitch kick as well. Well, we had a dance, a hitch kick, and all the pace in the world to outstrip the Spanish defence. Normal service resume. New Zealand straight off the kickoff. The 18 year old stepping up. What's this? Oh, show and go. That's wonderful footwork. Setting up her defender, using the outside, and then the little hip kick. The funny thing was, the hitch kick didn't need to be used. She, no. was, in, she was clean, clear, and hold. But you do sense, Scott, these New Zealanders are having fun. You know, all the four or five individuals have stepped up with some brilliance here. And that's what Sean Horner in the halftime was re-emphasizing, wasn't he, Gareth? Just say, yes, go out and do it again. And this young lady, well, she's caught the eye here on day one here in the Canada Sevens at West Hill Stadium in the city of Langford. I guess New Zealand can't be too overconfident that they still have England to come in that big pool match. And England, what a result before this game. Fiji tying England, an upset for many people, and a great result for Fiji. So this pool, still some things to be decided. Yeah, England are going to have to come out in a match 16 to try and beat this New Zealand team. In the air. Well, it was dangerous play there as uh, Hazel Tubing went up to uh, get the ball. Rather for, for two, uh, for, I should say, Gareth, I thought that for yeah. taking the player out illegally in the air. Let's have a look here. She's in the air. Yeah, no, no effort to go for the ball, and that, uh, yeah, that is a yellow card offense in sevens, really. Well, we've not seen a lot of uh, Spain. Well, they've least on the outside though. This is another run up the touchline by Laura Esprit. Esprit cuts back in. Well tackled though by Kelly Brazier. New Zealand reset their line again. Little tackle oh. goal. <laughs> Great little play, wasn't it, for New Zealand as uh, Salika Winiata picked up the ball. Yeah, Winiata did well, didn't she? This is three on one, though. Better play on the wide outside channel, though. It's better Garcia. Garcia, is that a try? It's going to be close. So, Leah Barard is going to uh, just check with her in goal touch judge. Try scored. 
So Spain have done well to come back and shown great heart. There's still a little bit left in the omelette. <laughs> Very good. It shows what teams can do if they get possession. Spain struggled to get any kind of possession in the first half. Here they've had some good ball. And uh, we're able to get over in the corner. Simple pass. This is the end of the play. Berta Garcia is going for the corner. She doesn't get it down initially. She gets rolled over. And does she get it down before the whitewash? Yes, say all three officials who gathered to discuss it. And the final score. New Zealand, 45. So final score then sees New Zealand go in at 45 points to 10. Do you want to cheer on Team Canada? Head on over to the Fueling Women Champions tent. You can pick up flappers, foam hands, and have a chance to win a signed Rugby Canada Women's Sevens jersey thanks to Canada's dairy farmers. Ready for match number 11 on day one of the World Rugby Women's Sevens World Series stop in Langford, Britain. And it is the United States and Russia. And you see that they will get together for the ninth time with the USA holding a 6-2 advantage. In this, the second game of pool play, pool C for these two teams. And the lineup, one through seven on the United States. Kelly Griffin, the captain for that team. And the danger on the Russian side. Certainly the 9 and 10. Kudinova and Kazakova, when they get together, good things happen uh, for Pavel Baranovsky's squad. Kudinova, the captain, and Nadezda with a uh, try earlier in the day against Canada, despite uh, taking the loss against the Canadians. Bill Seward alongside Sue Day. We got to see uh, Gail Broughton head down the line there on the pitch. Kind of reminded me of Sue Day back in the day. <laughs> Did you have that many steps? I don't think I ever had uh, ever in the whole 15 years I played rugby managed to find a step like that. That was an incredible piece of footwork. Got her out of trouble. And next thing over the try line, wonderful. It's the Canada women's sevens. There in the red is Russia. As they lost to uh, Canada. First get together in the 26-15 L for Russia. James and Balambu with the whistle. The United States a 40-5 victor over South Africa in their pool C opener. Once again, Russia in seventh position, the U.S. in fifth. Just a couple points back of France for that qualifying spot in the Rio Summer Olympic Games. And we are underway. Katie Johnson with the take, Baizad Hamadova with the tackle, and then Kelly Griffin going to try to get it out of there. Does to Alev Kelter. Kelter taken down by Maria Totoba. On the bounce, Bui Baravalala spins it to Vix Falayan. Falayan taken on Kazakova, and Falayan heads towards touch, tries to leave the ball behind, but not before the flag comes up, so the line out should go to Russia. Well watched by Kazakova in defense, Falayan committing the cardinal sin of all wingers and getting run into touch, handing the ball to the opposition. They met a couple times in Atlanta, and the U.S. posting victories in each time. So maybe the hardest thing to do once you get that familiarity is to beat a team yet again. And Pavel Baranovsky, I'm sure, reminding his charges that you can get the job done against the USA as uh, Daria Fefalova wearing the three for Russia. Trying to step over off the feet and awarded to Russia is the ball. 
Ever coming into this squad. Debut play a big, big moment for her, isn't it? Yeah, Buffalobo, 19 years of age, and her teammate uh, on the bench right now with the two, uh, Daria Lushina, also a teenager that at 18, and both of them sort of the first to really come through that Russian academy system. Krudnova to Kazakova, and then Bizon Hamadova. Bizon Hamadova getting the best of the U.S. defense and puts Russia up early under the post. Yeah, Lauren Doyle trying to get the ta tackle of Bizon Hamadova, but that's the sort of running we're used to seeing from Hamadova. Haven't seen so much of it this season. The offload from Kudinova keeps the ball alive. Then they get the ball out to Hamadova. She's got a lot of space against Lauren Doyle out there. And then you can see Lauren Doyle trying to get the dive desperately for the tap tackle. The a little kiss of the ball in celebration from Hamadova, and she's in. I'm not sure that Hamadova beats Doyle in a, in a flat foot race, but Doyle reached that first time, got off balance, and then by the time she got back into it and into stride, Hamadova was gone. She was gone, yeah. So, Russia with a 7-0 lead. Johnson flies in the air, makes the grab, and looks like Russia able to pick up the ball on the turnover there. Presented, a big hit as uh, Kelter hits Hamadova. And the whistle. Holding on too long on the Russian side, so the U.S. with it, and Kelly Griffin going to tap and work it the other way. Pretty flat pass to Alev Kelter and the Wisconsin product. Able to move it forward with uh, some help from her friends. Megan Bonney, gap there for Megan. Fend off of Malagina and Megan Bonney into free territory. What a tackle from Kudanova. He is a complete player. Certainly the uh, MVP of the Russian squad uh, so far this season. In tight, Bonnie to Johnson. KJ held up, gives back to Megan Bonnie. Waiting outside is the left Kelter, and Kelter just about seven meters out. Little turf problem there, and another whistle, and the ruck it forms, so playing it, and away it goes to Russia. Yeah, Kelter's stud saved Russia there, didn't they? Tripped herself up just before the try line, giving Russia a chance. Get ready, you're going to make a catch here because <laughs> Kudinova's sending one our way. Such an important player for this team, Kudinova, isn't she? Nope. Two tackles in a row she made there, so important. Tapping and going instead. I think she heard me. And Kelter gets her right close to the touch line, but not far enough and inside Malagina with some tough meters there in Bolambu a bit of obstruction but Totova not going to go down easy taken to the turf by Alev Kelter the U.S. counters over the U.S. with the turnover Kelly Griffin Finds Bonnie. That pops off the ground. And were they playing advantage or did they give it to? Yeah, not 10 from Russia, so another chance for go. the US. Taking their time now. Russian defense is organized, so this will be one off the, the training field. Kelly Griffin with some hesitation and then tries to split defenders. Problem is she can't get rid of that ball as she gets wrapped up by Russian tacklers. Johnson. Tries to leave it for no one in particular, and Kazakova had a run at it and took a trip. There won't be any call on that. Vera Valala brings it back the other way, and Vix Belayan. In a contest, the U.S. is down 7-0 with just over a minute to go in the first half. Vera Valala with the fend on Gazeva. Scooped up by Griffin and the whistle. The knock on and the scrum awarded to Russia. Tenacious defense Less from Russia. They'll be disappointed the with half. their first game today. They let Canada get away with it really quickly. Canada put huge amount of pressure on them early on, but this is a much better 
performance from Russia. Against the team, as you said, they, they don't have a good record against. So far, the, the defense just really tenacious, really getting in the faces of USA. And you see Rick Suggett and his US squad. On the other side of things, yeah, Russia kind of came back a little bit on Canada after a slow start, where well, the US really had it pretty easy, per se, against South Africa. And now they find themselves uh, in a bit of a tougher go with a half a minute remaining in the first half. Spun to uh, Baravalala on the cross, not given to her. But however, Lauren Doyle's there, and Lauren Doyle going to put it down. Now the all-important conversion. Can they get even for the intermission? The the States, yeah, lovely work from Lauren, Lauren Doyle. Doyle. She's the one that hammered over, handed off to get the Russian try. But here Lauren Doyle has the presence of mind to loop all the way around Baravalala, who gets the offload easily in in the end. Lauren Doyle has a clear run into the line, but intelligent play from Lauren Doyle to get US back in the game just on the stroke of half-time, which is always so important. We saw Lev Kelter with a kick there, and that was way off the mark. We saw her earlier in the day against South Africa, losing uh, a boot and doing it with bare foot and able to get it through, but not this time. 7-5, Russia has the lead on the USA at the half of this Pool C get-together. Anything you want, an official rugby Canada merchandise. Here's Nick, Nick. Close it up, Nick. Close it up. Here's Ready? One. Two. Three. Good. Hey. The, 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 the battles we need to win, the 50-50 battles, is turn them into 90-10 battles. We, we have them. The person who's there, make sure we keep clearing out the second person behind. Stay on your feet. Stay on your feet and get the ball chips. You guys got it? Yeah. Yep. Don't get off our feet there. Stay on our feet on there. Hey, keep flooding the areas. This is the pace we want the game played. Remember what we talked about? Is that that last two or three minutes when run is really going to come down? That's just true grit. Yep. That's just true grit, you guys. Yep. Hey, make your first up tackles. Make your first up tackles. Get them onto the ground. Lots of talk. Lots yep. of talk. Lots of talk confuses the opposition. Yep. Keep on to them. Keep on them. Chips. Let's have a great ball on the restart. Let's have one to go get it. Let's get ready for the live grenade around the ball. Hey, yep. let's turn yep. one. Right on, John. Right on. Let's go. The USA finds itself down a couple of points to Russia at the break, and Rick Suggett talking to his charges. Of course, uh, Rick, the former Canada men's 15s and 7s coach, and also women's 7s, and he said, Sue Day, he likes the pace, but then there's some other things to work on. <laughs> some other things to work on. He's also said, Keep talking, lots of talk, it confuses the opposition. I'm not sure how much it confuses an opposition that speaks Russian. The lineup, we'll the lineup remains the same, and uh, Kelter puts it in the air, but not going to be close to being at least contested in air, but Johnson makes the tackle on the Kazakova. And then Kudinova taken down by Johnson yet again. And holding on to off goes the USA. Taking a step through is Vix Belion. Spun back to Kelter. There's two outside if she can get it there, but she can't. Presents it to Bonnie. Baravalala to Doyle and Lauren Doyle with the put down. Well work from the USA, they all came from the turnover. And if Kelter took the ball in, when perhaps if she got it out, it was going to be an easy try. But in the end, they recycled. They were patient, through the hands. Barra Balala out to Doyle and a very easy finish for her in the end. That's a couple of tries in this game. It's all happening for Lauren Doyle in this game. Lauren Doyle ran track in uh, high school, went to Eastern Illinois, made her debut uh, in Dubai back in 2012, and Kelter going to push that one uh, to the right, unable to convert on the two U.S. tries, but the United States now with the lead on uh, Pavel Baranovsky's Russian squad by a score of 10 to 7. Kelter on the restart, once again, right down the middle. And Malagina taken down by Vic Spillion. Kudinova runs laterally. And Kelter 
with an aggressive takedown. And away goes Russia yet again. Kudnova. Momentum building for Russia. Lots of calls going their way. USA desperate in the tackle, getting a bit high. Kudnova with the tap and then tries to find a running mate, Maria Totova, the 12. In Atlanta, Russia lost that third place game to Canada, faced Canada today in the opener and got dropped 26-15. Three consecutive penalties against the United States and Russia is just outside the 22. Losing the handle is Hamadova. Check that Malajina because Hamadova's out here on the side awaiting a pass maybe from Kazakova, but Ekaterina going to continue on her own personal pursuit. Meanwhile, Totova goes back the other way. And the U.S. looks like they're maybe outgunned to the corner and trying to find that corner. And doing so is Bogacheva for the try. Really good sevens rugby from Russia. Moved it all the way one way. Kazakova hammered over, cleared out, made sure that they kept really good ball. Moved the ball all the way, the other way into the hands of Bogacheva. Her sixth try. There she goes. Titova's carrying the ball, challenging the defence. In the end, gets the ball out to Bogacheva, and there's just too much for Megan Bonney to do there. Score in the corner, a tricky kick. This one. Bogacheva gets the uh, score and checking in. Maria Kukino wearing the eight for Russia, also in for the United States as the conversion the goes through. Good. That's a boomer. Well done. A tricky kick, but clearly a kickable one. Excellent work. Those extra two points can make all the difference in sevens rugby. And so Russia on the restart. Fefalova, the youngster, uh, making the kick and then making the mistake, as youngsters will do. Yeah, mistake off the kick. It can turn Fefalova into a world-class kicker. That will be a real find for this Russia team. They haven't had one of those kickers that could put the ball on a sixpence. And if she can kick it that far, that actually that she, that enabled her to get that conversion, they could have a real find there in Fefalova. So at halfway, the United States begins its exploration of Russian territory here. And uh, Joanne Kaobesi to Kelter. Kelter needs some help. The pop pass to Griffin off the barrel. Malala to the corner goes Thomas. Does she get it down? Yes, the United States. Coming right back. Absolute quality offload made this try. I think it was Kaobesi in the end. Ball gets into the hands of Kristin Thomas. It's Favessia here. She keeps keeps an arm free, just gets that offload to Kelter. When had she died with the ball there, the defence would have got back to help. And again, the offload from Kelter. Finally, the ball gets into the hands of Kristin Thomas. Practically her first touch, and not a bad one. Conversion attempt by Vera Valala. Going to go against the wind. It's blowing kind of at her and across the field at the same time. And does she got enough? She does! Real quality kicking in this game. The, the standard of the kicking just keeps on getting better and better. Barra Valada, what a kick to follow Pfeffel overs. Anything you can do, I can do too. A little like Scott Hastings in his rescue club working it against. I'm going to carve it up. And the United States with a 17 14 lead. That's with 25 seconds to go. Not rolling away. Back comes Russia. Danger time for the USA. Hamadova trying to fend against Doyle and uh, taking Hamadova to touch. 
That is an excellent tackle from Lauren Doyle. Not just making the tackle, but tackling Hamid over into touch, getting the ball back for the USA. US possession, all they have to do. That was a game right there. Out. For all intents and purposes, as uh, Irene Gardner. If they can be successful on this one, time has expired. So the final play underway. Up top, off the Griffin. Oh, a bit of a hash by the USA. And away goes Bogacheva, already with the try. Can she get another one? It would seal the deal for Russia. Fefalova. Amadova. Got folks outside if they can get the ball out there, and they can't. The United States a chance to reorganize. Goes flat. Bonnie trying to hold her up. And the ball pops out. And Russia maintains. Kamadova. Has three people standing outside of her, but instead tries to snap off a right ankle and turn it inside. In the air it comes. Kazakova. The U.S. battles back and not quick enough. Getting closer. Kazakova, just a couple of meters out. That's extremely unlucky for Russia because there's no way the USA with 10 meters at that last quick tap. No way at all. And That'll as it do is, it. The USA have turned it over. They're a little bit lucky there, in my opinion. Taking a shot to touch and the whistle will blow and a hard fought victory for the United States. 17 to 14 over Russia. So the next game up here in the city of Langford is Canada versus uh, South Africa. Paolo, when Canada won by 26 points to five and in the four ties so far, Canada have won every single match so far. Well, Kayla Maleshi, Karen Paka and Kelly Russell give this team some real go forward there. Ashley Stacey, the skippers of the team, and someone who caught the eye in the first game in Canada's 26-15 win was number one, Brittany Ben. For South Africa, Rochelle Heldenhaus, Marita Pinar, and Zenny Jordan will give the team direction. The team is captained by Jordan. And uh, Pamuza Gadu, well, she caught the eye for this uh, South African team and uh, the home support rattling around the stadium here in uh, 
Langford City alongside me, Scott Hastings, who's like Gareth Reese, the uh, homebred Canadian. And uh, sitting up here in our commentary position, well, Canada were very impressive in their opening tie, winning that one by 26 points to 15 over Russia. Yeah, they were. They dealt with any nerves of being the home team and put some good points on the board. And they'll be favoring themselves in this one against South Africa. Beatrice and Benvenuti from Italy will uh, referee this one. So uh, kicking off will be uh, Zeni Jordan. There she is, holds the ball up. Plenty of loft on this ball. It drops down towards the uh, Canadian 22. Canada, of course, playing in the white jerseys. Yay! Actually, Stacey takes the ball into contact. Strong running there from Kayla Maleshi. Maleshi. To Bianca Farella. Oh, lovely goal from Kelly Russell. Russell strong and up to the 10 yard line of the South Africans. Oh, Maleshi. Each occasion, Canada have gone short. They haven't taken the ball wide yet. Been patient as Ashley Stacey probes the blind side. Kelly Russell once again showing great strength. Russell, who was in outstanding form for the Canadian 15 side in last year's Rugby World Cup in France. Now there's an overlap here, ball in the hand. Chislin Landry on the outside rack goes in under and listen to the noise of the home support. Landry's big moment, she says, I'll take the kick as well. There it is, two more points. And great work for the women in white jerseys to move that ball across the field to where the space was. There's the rock, good protection of the ball. And simple hands, Pharrell fixes the defender. All green jerseys. Finally, Landry unmarked on the end. Well, there's the girls on the bench, the support crew, delighted. We do have one player down on the field. Looks like he may need a substitution here. Well, there's an injury on the uh, far side that's uh, just holding us up. Let's just have a look at the pool table because, uh, well, the last game of the day will be between Canada and the uh, United States. And, uh, yeah, well, this is almost a very interesting. The result we just had where the U.S. barely dodged the South Africans puts them top of the table. They almost lost that top ranking. And Canada will want to join them here. And uh, as we know, in this tournament, points difference becomes an issue. The Russians played some good rugby, but no wins to, to show for yeah, it. Yeah, and if Russia had actually taken uh, the scalp of the United States and they were lucky not to do so, um, it would have been really interesting that final game. So it's all about the, the jockeying Welcome. positions. And the last Welcome. game of the day, of Canada. course, is that Canada US. That's at uh, 5 50 p.m. Sorry, 6 uh, 50 p.m., which is the last game here on the uh, in the evening. So the crowd are already buzzing, and that's a great rivalry. They'll love to see. So play just held up here through uh, an injury to one of the South African players. She's been well attended to, but uh, obviously in a game of uh, physical contact, you're always going to get a, a, a head knock. Just in the tackle. Looks as though it was uh, Rochelle Helton who uh, looks like. Yeah, I'm not sure that the forearm didn't come down on her on her face or her neck, but. Uh, She's getting full treatment there, and this was the end. The simple hands from Canada. Let's watch the forearm there, and there it is, just on the neck. No, no intentions at all by the Canadian player. So, Gareth, while we're waiting for this injury, let's have a look at the series table. Of course, New Zealand on that 60 points at the top. Very interesting if we can remind everybody who's watching this on online on worldrugby.org and across our host broadcaster, across our international broadcasters, that um, the top four teams have practically qualified for the Olympic Games. And if you see the competition between 
positions four, five, and six with uh, Russia hard on the heels. It's going to be a fascinating end with two more ties to come or uh, series to come, both at Twickenham and in Amsterdam. Yes, and the New Zealand sort of with the calculators are out are wondering if they can even declare at the top that they're clear enough to guarantee their position in Rio. But it's those sort of positions, three to six, where they're really fighting it out. And, uh, you know, the women scoring these tries are going to be under a lot of pressure in the next day and a half to finish out this tournament. And, of course, we saw New Zealand at the top of the uh, the standings, but also at the top of the all-time trial is these two magical players for New Zealand, Portia Woodman, Kayla McAllister. It's tally, isn't it, there, that they've scored, and they're such... They are, and how about Bianca Ferrella? They're only 23 years of age, but already fifth in the all-time scoring. He's in Landry landing uh, 40 tries as well, and uh, Karen Packard. So um, some great names there that uh, will long be on this list. Of course, this is only the third year of the World Rugby Women's Seven Series, and Portia Woodman, well, on this form, she's going to close out 400, try, uh, 400 points, isn't she, about by the end of play? Yeah, I would think so. yeah, by the end of this uh, this tournament here in Canada. New Zealand uh, playing uh, England up next and uh, yeah, there's some, uh, of course, uh, Emily Cherry lying second on the list is not here. She's uh, currently injured at the moment. We wish her all the very best. Now, if you're enjoying all the action, why don't you tweet us at World Rugby Sevens? I'll go online to worldrugby.org forward slash sevens and then hashtag Canada sevens that's seven s and we should give a big shout out here and uh, we're on the west coast of Canada where uh, the city of Langford the host uh, city here and the city of Victoria where all the ladies have been staying down in the harbor host of the Commonwealth Games back in 94 but now hosting World Series rugby and uh, the women have had a great experience and uh, it's been a bit of good stop for them so uh, Great to see, and the, the women are living up to their part, providing some great action here today. Well, Gary, this has been a great job for Rugby Canada to put on this uh, wonderful tournament here in the city of Langford, and I know you've been heavily involved uh, with also bringing the men's tournament to Vancouver next year. Tell us where that's going to be and what, what date. It's going to be right in the heart of the great city of Vancouver on the west coast of Canada again in BC Place. Uh, 56,000 seat stadium with great hospitality, big big screen there, and uh, Canada Sevens, the the team that's put that together. Uh, John Furlong, the man who put on the Vancouver 2010 Olympics, he was the CEO. He's been here today, and uh, he will be helping us with that. And we're really excited about bringing the world uh, to Vancouver and the opportunity it provides. Not only to have a great event, but to grow the game in this part of the world and, and give them give everyone a focus. And that's point. in February next year, isn't it? That's Indoor in Stadium, and it'll yeah. mar in March next year. So uh, guys, if uh, You'd like to come to Vancouver, why don't you uh, put that one on your bucket list? Well, back to the uh, the women's uh, series. These are the points available for the uh, cup winners. Uh, New Zealand on the top by 60. They've got uh, three wins to their name. Uh, and a nice warm applause for this uh, injured South African player who's um, going to depart from the action. And as that's been going on, there's the, the crowd respecting it. Both teams have been staying warm, moving the ball. Uh, keeping themselves limber. So what does this do to a uh, player's mind, guys? When you have a break like this, you, you're pumped up, you're ready to go, and within a minute, you're having to stop and start again. Yeah, you definitely come down. You obviously think about your fellow competitor who's, who's on a stretcher, but you have to put that out of your mind. You have to get back to your specific jobs, what your tasks are, right from this uh, restart. So uh, Canada will have to refocus. South Africa will want to play for their left the field. So Sunel Barnard comes uh, in off the bench. So Canada will start. Justin Landry got that opening try. It was converted by, uh, by herself. And Ashley Stacey. Plenty of height in that ball. It's going to travel the 10 metres to the uh, the hashtag line. Rachel Heldenhouse uh, leaves that one alone. I think it was uh, Maruti Pinar who was uh, taken off. Yeah, looking down, it was uh, Maruti Pinar. So we hope that she is well and uh, well attended here by all the medics, just ensuring her safety was absolutely paramount. And Canada did start with a mental error there from Stacey, so can South Africa make her pay? 
Dadu on the uh, far side. She's got plenty of pace in her legs. And Stacey backed that up with a, a penalty at the breakdown. Hands in the ruck. Heldenhuis puts the ball down and uh, will leave the ball for Pletchy. So Pletchy will uh, set this set, this play. Mathen Simmers, she'll be the first receiver. So they've set the play here. That was a nice wee cut there, wasn't it? By Zeni Jordan. And they've gone down the blind side, South Africa. Very well organised, this team coached by Renfrew Dizel. Back is Borussia Herdenhaus. Manages to pop the ball up to Simmers. But look at the Canadian defence coming through. Pushing the South African side back. Herdenhaus has the speedster outside but opts to go herself. Here's the speedster. Tackle to the ground is Gadu. The Miza Gadu. And then the strength of uh, Karen Pakan. Gislin Landry, the try scorer to Bianca Farella. Farella has a little cut up and over the 22 meter line she goes. Gislin Landry opts to uh, put the kick through. Oh, oh, oh. oh, great pace coming in here from Kayla Maleshi. Maleshi just has to have good footwork here. Maleshi, she opted to pick the ball up, was well tackled. Landry by the line! Try time Canada! Landry there in shot. She started the movement with the chip kick. And Kayla Maleshi, the youngster, she made the run, gathered the kick, and Landry popped up again to score the try. She got the bounce. Looked like Maleshi may be away, but an excellent covering tackle from South Africa. Landry had just enough. Does she get it down right over the line? Great shot. Great support. So important in the sevens game, Scott, not to quit on it. And she was there in a support role, and Landry also adds the extra two. So Kayla Maleshi, she sprinted upfield, tackled by Sunel Barnard. But Gislin Landry in for her second try, converts again to put Canada into a 14 0 lead. Keep it up, Ben! Go ahead! Let's go, Ben! Wake up! Great kick, Gis! Sarah Kuljubi encourages and shouts out to her teammate, and Ashley Stacey. This one's good. Brittany Ben puts the ball back. Landry gets smashed in the tackle by Rochelle Heldenhaus. Ashley Stacey. Stacey up to the halfway line. Ball through Pakan to Farella. Farella tries to go on the white outside channel. Sucks in the tackle of Zeni Jordan. Well crafted sevens coming here from Canada. There's a two on one on the outside. A hat trick. Hat trick time for Gislin Landry. That's three for Canada, three for Landry. Well, she can't believe a lot, and she can't believe she's had to run another one in. Her whole team provided that one. They went side to side, and she's puffing a bit. This was the final pass. Great skills from the Canadians, pushing it through the hands. Landry knew she had to run it in, and I wonder if John Tate may give her rest. This will be her 21st unanswered point before South Africa can even get on the board as she's taking the conversions as well. Three tries, three conversion. Canada 20 0 up. Landry 20 1 0 up, yes. I should say. Well, Ilya Green from uh, Australia, she got a hat-trick in her uh, opening game today against Brazil. And uh, holding the, uh, the ice against uh, a head knock for Canada is N Nadia Popov. <laughs> well, the ball was spilt. Jordan has to... ...house goes into... Try and secure a ball for the South Africans. Ball away by Mathen Simmers. Simmers has to try and look for the, uh, the wide outside channel. Gadu, well, a little bit of an experience there. She held on to the ball, well tackled. South Africa oh. under pressure here. Look at Canada, turned over ball. Ball into Maleshi. Brittany Ben, Ben! 
22 meter line, and Ben! Brilliant Ben for Canada! Britt Ben getting the congratulations from her teammates. The crowd are delighted. But once again, it's the physical play at that breakdown from Canada. They stole the ball, they drove the South Africans off it, and then it's simple. Look at the footwork here. Mounted ball, she just steps out of it, and then has the power to get through. Well, she really caught the eye in the uh, opening tie. Canada winning that one by 26 to 15 over Russia. And It's been an impressive performance for Canada. They lead at halftime, 20 points to nil. Just what the doctors ordered, the sun is out. They're playing at home. Oh, they're gonna gather great scenes here. inside run for Delzell and the South African team. Not much to uh, be positive about. Giving the ball away to this Canadian side is going to cost them. Got to hold on to it and string some phases together. A very tough pool, a pool C that they find themselves in along with Canada, the US, and the Russia. There. John Tate on the right of your screen, and with one sevens cap, but is a, a great mind. It was a big sevens cap. It was, yeah. <laughs> it's funny enough, the game that was coming up in this pool, Canada versus US, the coach of the American team picked him when he was the Canada sevens coach to go to Dubai for one cap. So a nice little rivalry there. But right now it's Canada and South Africa. Canada in the uh, white jersey. Uh, Natasha. Watch him, Roy, in off the bench, wearing the number 12 jersey. Restart is from uh, Alyssa Alari. But it's not tech on 10 metres from Alicia Alari. For the second time, Canada not getting the technical part done on the kickoff. Yeah, Gislin uh, Landry is uh, taking a well earned rest, as is uh, Ashley Stacey. Smiling up at the commentary box, waving to her fans. Oh, the knock-on turnover ball. Little step and go, that looked sharp there, didn't it, from Elisa Alari. And Brittany Ben, she's been a real fine We were asking a little bit of information about her uh, under-20 Canadian player. Back to the action, though. Gadu, she's the sprinter. Cuts inside Farella, but a wonderful cover tackle from Kelly Russell, one of the most experienced players in this Canadian team. Oh, hitting the good angle. Well, it's at Chanel Bernard, but she's brought down by Ben. So Ben, as well as the attacking chores, she's going through the tackling chores as well. She is, but what a great line from Chanel Bernard. Finally, South Africa holding onto the ball, and she hit a good line coming back towards it. But credit Britt Ben and her teammates. There it is. He changed the angle, and that almost beat the defense, but Britt Ben immediately comes in and knocks the ball away. Yeah, she spent five years at the University of Golf, where she obtained five OUA gold medals, three CIS bronze and two CIS oh. silvers. Oh, over that here. Balls loose for South Africa, they'll attack. Zuma Gadu. 
This is Platchi. They're all a little bit scrappy there. Well, as great as all the outside backs look for Canada, the big girls up front, Karen Packin, number three there, and Kelly Russell have been doing some of putting in big, big hits on the South Africans. And that's completely shifted the momentum of this game. Elisa Larry, she'll uh, feed the ball. She's played in the final of the Women's Rugby World Cup that lost to England last year. Nice coaching experience at hockey, at basketball, flag football, at rugby, and coaches at high school experience. Bianca Farella then. Farella caught in the tackle, the super tackle. Coming in from Sinazo Nobel. Ben steps, route one, invites the tackle of Matherin Simmers. There's a little bit of a gap here, and up the middle goes Natasha Watson Roy. And Roy's going to score in the corner here. And Watson Roy, well, the gap opened up. She took it with both hands, dots the ball down over the whitewash, and Canada well in control of this tie. What a great moment for the 22-year-old. And one of the benefits of this scoreline is that John Tate has been able to empty the bench. She spots there's no cover, there's no help at the side of the ruck. And she backs herself, watch him Roy. Ball in the wrong arm, but the only criticism there. A wonderful moment for her to score at the inaugural Canada Sevens. Well, she was uh, captain of the Ottawa University GG's women's rugby team. <laughs> and uh, well, if they're watching online, they'll be all G'd up. Kelly Russell just gives it one big hoof down into deep into South African territory. South Africa will have to attack from deep through Kirsten Conrad. Conrad eventually gets the ball back and look at the defence running up. Bianca Ferrella just uh, overran the uh, the defensive lines there. Barnard. Tackle 11 on 11, Jackie Creel for South Africa. And South Africa not getting any space to build their phase of possession. Creel in the movement again. Kristen Conrad, Conrad sticks ones up the touchline. Cool is going to be back on this ball. There she is, Cool Jubee. Chunky player this one, but gets to a power of work. And look at the way she's now driving. Gets to deck so they can recycle ball. Karen Packham. Tara Kaljavi did well there. She's one of the finds for John Tate from their development trip to Hong Kong. But now it's a breakout. A lovely little step on the inside. Natasha Watson Roy in for her second try. And Watson Roy. Well. She'll be watching those two tries, watch them right. <laughs> well, that's good team sevens. Canada were exposed for a moment. As we said, Sarah Kaljami cleaned things up, got them back on track, and then through the hands, watch them right benefits. Short little ball here. She runs in behind, off the right foot, and then pace to spare. I like the way she also switched the ball from the left side to the right side to sprint away. And uh, Kelly Russell nails the conversion. Karen Paka comes off the uh, off the field. Not bad. Number eight's doing the kicking. And then Kelly Russell getting <laughs> the extra points. Yeah, Kelly Russell. She's uh, this is her 13th World Rugby Tournament. She's been an outstanding for 12 tries. She scored the 15th Player of the Year that uh, she was awarded on Thursday evening at Government House. Shared that title with Miguel Harvey. And a real stalwart for Canadian women's rugby. She is, and Nigley Harvey, you mentioned there, who is the World Rugby Women's Player of the Year, not able to make this Canadian side at the moment. So that is the, the depth that John Tate has at his disposal. Chanel Barnard strapping that blonde South African. Ball into Jackie Creel. Creel. And that, uh, well, look at the pressure coming on in the, uh, the midfield, Hannah Darling. And South Africa just retreating here, but they've got the attack going again. Recycling the ball. Lorinda Brown. Brown is well tackled on the far side. The support angle is through Jackie Creel. Creel's up to the 22-meter line. South Africa stringing some good phases together. 
Kirsten Conrad. Now into Maffron Simmers. Simmers, well, there was an opportunity to offload there to Sunel Bernard. Bernard's now got it. She'll go for the corner. The big tackle comes in, though, for Canada. From the Nadia Popov. And the defence is secure. And real heart in this team. Yeah, team defence. There's no time showing on the clock. But every Canadian player committed. The South Africans had a hint of a two-on-one. They couldn't execute and the final pass from Kristen Conrad couldn't go to hand. We will have one final line out for Canada on their line. They'll want to get this ball off the park. So Canada will just take this one. Surely the Kelly Russell will just go to deck and they'll clear it. But uh, maybe they want some more. So that Kojibi just gives them such direct running. I guess they're thinking points difference in the tables, so keep keep the scoreboard ticking over if they can. <laughs> Kelly Russell it, re recycles the ball. Nadia Popov with the uh, scrum up pass. Bianca Farella. Canada through Natasha Watson Roy to Farella. Not seen really Farella have a little shot here, but the long striding Canadian who streaks up the pitch. He's going to add a further try. And Hannah Darling is the darling <laughs> of the Langford City Canadian crowd. <laughs> well, I said it maybe points difference they're after. Maybe they're just having a wonderful time out there in front of their home crowd. And they wanted to give him one more score. And it was Bianca Farella running across. See, she's attracted the two green jerseys. Then the late drop pass gives the youngster Hannah Darling the girl who was up at Shawnee and Lake School, just about 20 minutes north of here for her grade 12 year, the product well, of Ontario. Great moment for her. Great moment for uh, Anna Darling, but also great moment for this Canadian team. They've got such unity there. They've congratulated each other. There's the pat on the back for Hannah Darling. And uh, Canada, well, they beat Russia by 26 points to 15. They beat in South Africa by 47 points to nil. They've got a game coming up against Matt, USA in match 18. So let's have a look at the pools after two yeah. games, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. New Zealand lead pool A. Fiji will play Spain. New Zealand will play England. That will be a fascinating tussle. In uh, pool B, Australia have been very, very impressive. They haven't conceded a point. 83 they've got in their favour. And Australia well in control of that particular pool. Chased well by France, though, who also have two victories. And we'll see Canada, as we've just seen, top the table with an emphatic 47 points to nil victory over South Africa. We'll be back in about, what, 35 minutes? So uh, don't pop the kennel on, stick a shrimp on the barbie. <laughs> we've enjoyed your company.
Jaguars.
Looks like it's got YouTube tickets in there. Doesn't sound like that. I don't think you can fit that. You sure about that? Okay, here we go. What's in the can, man? Pick up your prize and show the crowd proudly here. Oh, beautiful beach ball. Not a rugby ball, a beach ball. All right, congratulations. As previously picked, Shannon. You sure you don't want this one?
Got a minute. Are you working with me? Then you might want to get over here. Gee. Don't let my lack of energy infect. When this goes here. World Rugby Women's Sevens World Series rolls on with the Canada Women's Sevens Full Stadium in Bonnie Langford, British Columbia. The fourth six stop tour. And take a look who is atop the heap. No surprise, uh, New Zealand with a 12 point advantage on Australia and Canada. France residing in that fourth spot and the United States just two points back, while England six back of the fourth position. And once again, the fourth position, an automatic qualifier, the top four actually, uh, qualifying for the Summer Olympic Games in Rio. What has happened so far? Pool A, it has been all New Zealand with a 59-point differential, getting past Fiji and Spain, while England that draw against Fiji in Pool B, Australia and France. So they are set for their showdown, while Brazil and China, on the other end of the spectrum, will battle it out to avoid the seller. And in Pool C, the United States, exactly a scintillating win, 17-14 over Russia, and then Canada came out and cruised past South Africa. But it will be Canada and the United States not far away, and Russia and South Africa.
together. How do you score points? Well, you win some games. If you're the cup winner, you get 20 points. The runner's up at 18. Plate winners at 12, and the bowl winners at four. Keith Quinn told me to do all the numbers, and I love Keith Quinn, but I'm not going down every number. If you're a viewer there, you can look down the right side and see the digits. I'm Bill Seward alongside the former English captain Sue Day. A lovely Saturday afternoon in the Great North. And you see some of the lumber behind uh, the grandstand at uh, West Hill Stadium. Beautiful lining of tree and terrain here in lovely British Columbia. And more specifically, Lankford, uh, our hosts have been, well, they've been outstanding. And more so to you, Sue. Yeah, it's been a wonderful place to be in this tournament. The, the pitch is brilliant, the stadium perfect, the setting in amongst the trees couldn't be better. I would say so far, no real surprises in the tournament except for that Fiji-England game where they played to a draw. Yeah, it's all gone to form other than that. R Russia, USA could have gone either way and that's pretty much according to the form book to England. Made a bit of an error, kicking the ball out with about 40 seconds to go in possession against Fiji. But, you know, again, Fiji are close to them in the table, so not a huge surprise these days. Fiji getting better and better. These two teams, China is 12th in the overall standings after losing to France uh, today, 29-0, and then getting dropped by Australia, 40-0, while Brazil is 9th in the standings. A 43-0 defeat by Australia and then uh, losing to France, 27-5, the final. The teams in the tunnel getting ready to come out. The sun is well, it's certainly got a few more hours before it sets, but it's decidedly to one side of our horizon right now. And casting the shadows, as you see, from uh, right to left. China in the orange, Yellow, little white, quite a mix. It's another tequila sunrise. Well on the Brazilian side, straight forward. Green and yellow. And a look at uh, Rose Labreche of Canada. Speaking of roses, we are not far from the Bouchard Gardens here in Lovely British Columbia, and uh, if you have a chance to go there, go see it. Okay. It is amazing. Just uh, the ability for the earth to produce that many colors. We are set to go, Brazil and China. In the air, and Yuan Yuan going back, taking a look at bounds and into touch. So. China will have the line out here on the near side. Estevez, Sarda, Araujo, Ishibashi, Okan, Ramalo, and Santilli, the starters. For Brazil. Meanwhile, Yuan Yuan, Ho Yang, Chao Ming, Chen Chen, Chi Chao, Lilian. The starting seven for China as Ho. Tries the right side. Yang Ho making her debut in Dubai back in 2013. And the whistle awards the ball to China. Xiao Ming to Yuan Yuan. Taking a look outside at Yu Yang. Just across halfway. And Xiao Ming going in to pull it out of there. But uh, the scrum going to be awarded to China. Good possession for China, moved the ball across the pitch effectively, went forwards, which is what we've not seen enough of from them. Tend to play quite laterally, but they managed to get the ball from their 22 over the halfway line, so at least they're going forwards. Going to take you up close and personal here, worldrugby.org, if you're watching there, wherever you are around the world. Thanks for joining us. And you see the battle on between China and Brazil. A couple of teams looking for their first victory in the tournament. Rounding the right side, Yang Chen Chen. Chen cuts back. Chen across midfield, and away goes Sun Shi Chao. 
The captain is going to put it down, and is it across the line? Yes, it is. Excellent finishing from Sun Chi Chow. She's come in, taking the captaincy from Ting Ting, who the team really is missing, but she's doing her bit as captain. It's that cut ball again, a little bit lateral, but she manages to cut back well, and then just pins her ears back and finishes as she bashes, chasing, but can't quite get there. You saw the determination on the replay and the way the eyes opened up, and the captain putting it across, had a couple of tries in Atlanta. Gets one to open things out. China converts and a 7 nothing lead. So in terms of the ranking, China in 12, Brazil in 9. It is the underdog ranking-wise that has an early 7 nothing advantage. A good start from China. They need to put pressure on Brazil early on because Brazil are very much favorites now. A season ago, that wouldn't have been the case. This would have been, you'd, you would have been finding it very hard to call this, but Brazil have been getting better and better and better through this series. You saw the uh, pool and you saw how the point differential plays out. And of course, China and Brazil each getting a walloping from uh, France and Australia, respectively. And then France and Australia are going to get together here shortly. Quite a game, Sue. You got the team up, uh, you know, in second and in uh, fourth. And the team in fourth, France, they, I think they've been pointing for this one. They got here early to uh, Langford and put some training time in. Yeah, that should be a good one. France France playing well this tournament. Maybe this is the one. They, they beat, of course, beat Australia in the last tournament in Atlanta, so they'll be fancying their chances. Australia without Emily Cherry. France really stringing some good stuff together with Lada César. Could you say that again one more time, La Danus? La Danus. Oh, thank you. Yeah, they're just ahead, Australia and France, with uh, Scott Hastings and Gareth Reese going to join you here from West Hill Stadium. China on the move yet again, and Xu Chao brought down. Chen Chen brings it out of there, bounces it past Yuan Yuan. And uh, Liu Yuan Yuan, the 21 year old at 5'11. Quite a few of the uh, Chinese players, they got three or four at 5'10, 5'11. You'll give me the uh, metric uh, conversion here soon, right? Get the calculator out. 180, maybe, something like that. Right around, yeah. Yeah, China making it difficult stuff. So just, just too lateral running with the ball. They're running that cut move, but running completely sideways. You need to take the ball forward to take the defense on. Diminutive Paula Ishibishi uh, taking it uh, out of there and giving it to Mariana Romalo into the fray she goes, and then Araujo. Up high, back to Romalo, and Romalo going to put Brazil on the board. All made by Ishibashi. She she took the, the play on, recycled, got back up with the player who played the ball again off the floor. Then Brazil moved the ball into space. Here she goes. Ishibashi is so important this Brazil team. So she plays the cut move. She's then back again. You'll see her here, recycling it, leaping into the picture. Passing the ball out, and then Romalho can see the defense sprinting over to cover the side of the pitch, which leaves her a big hole straight down the middle. Important conversion attempt by Raquel Kokan, and she gets it to go through, so we are all even. The battle joined between uh, Brazil and China. A little fist pump from Kokan showing oh, yeah. quite how important that one was. Even at seven. This is a Brazilian squad we saw last year, Sue, uh, in Sao Paulo with the uh, the amazing Edna Santini and her ability to pitch. Another one that right around five feet tall, if yeah. that. And uh, <laughs> she is coming back from injury. And Coach Chris Neal says hopefully she can maybe get a little time at the end of the month and possibly an appearance at uh, London or... Uh, Amsterdam. You can imagine a team with Ishibashi, the form that she's in, plus Santini putting the strings in the middle of the park. Shavard able to get it off to uh, Araujo and uh, kind of a uh, a bit of a mix there by Brazil as, as Sarda inside the 22. Ishibashi. Back to Estevez. 
Brazil getting very flat, putting pressure on themselves. You need to get deeper, put some pace onto the ball, but they're just moving the ball sideways at no pace. How is the Chinese defence to get on top of them and compete for the ball? So time has expired in the first half, and the final play, the ball will start in the hands of Xiaoming in China. They work out on the right side. Trying to step around it. Zhao Lilian, the 11 there. And that's the end of the first half. And Even at seven. Score, Brazil, seven. Brazil. China, Brazil. And China. All even as we head into the huddle at the half. <笑>集中一箭射不能传球太多能短传球不要太多能明白吗拿到球不行就往下抢线不行就往下抢线慢点打集中我们一起还能打吗就不行就往下抢不行就往下去一边丢出点下半场多打就没问题尽管丢出球
shot. Decent step by Shi Chow. Shi Chow covering a lot of ground, but not necessarily much distance. China finds itself down five and get another chance to re rack. Malo in tough for the tackle on Yang Ho. And a pretty good job by Brazil to fight through that and get the turnover as Ishibashi to Sarda. Back to Estevez. On the switch, Romalo hands off to Estevez, almost tripped up there, and then the ball so they won. to the turf. With the jump pass, Sarda outside, Ishibashi on the cut. Araujo can't find the handle, and that'll send it to a scrum in favor of China. Yeah, Brazil just keeping it a little bit tight, running the ball short, little pop passes back into the middle, playing into China's hands, really. Brazil are good when they move the ball into the open spaces, play direct rugby, but out wide. The moment not really getting it there. Substitutions now, a couple of them coming in for Brazil. The seven is Claudia Tellis, the eight. Check that, the nine is Bruno Latufo. A little over three minutes to go. Coach. Find. In the third match of the day in Brazil. Both in search of their first victory in the tournament. And Brazil comes out with it. Romalo leaving it back for Sarda. Getting a bit closer before getting whistled up. Oh, it looked like Sarda had managed to wriggle her arm free to get the offload to Ishibashi. That would have been the match winner probably, but as it is, China hold out, still just five points in it. Huang Mikey wearing the seven in for China, along with the Chen Ku Yi in jersey number eight on the Brazilian side. Beatriz Futuro. Two and 11. Okay, just hold on, guys. Just hold on. In the okay, eight. Just hold on for a second. Just hold. And Isadora Cerullo. Zero, let me know when you're happy. With the six, as you see on the right side of the screen. Okay, great. Thank you. Come in. Coach. Bind. Set. Chance for China now. Good pressure at the scrummage. Just a couple minutes to go. And a 12-7 lead for Brazil. Cerullo spins one long, very dangerous, but Claudia Tellis has it, and Claudia has some pace. Surprise, surprise, she surprised me and China. Yeah, those bounce passes work sometimes, don't they? The ball goes to ground, the defense stops. That time it bounced up into Telez's hands. Because the defense has stopped, the set for a little bit of space on the outside. There we go, one hand, one bounce, straight into her hands. Bang, she's in the corner. That's exactly what Brazil needed. Good turnover at the breakdown. Again, they've just had the better of China at the breakdown all game, and it's just been good enough. One of the three uh, debutantes on the tour for Coach Chris Neal, and two of them getting together, teaming up for that one as Cirillo bounces one out to Tellus, and Claudia takes it home. And now Brazil with a 10-point advantage with a minute to go. Cirillo to restart. Liu Yang keeping an eye, and Yuan Yuan makes the grab. 
before being tackled there. See if they can mount one last surge to get a few more points. Get a bit closer to Brazil. Coming out of there with it is Sarda. She drops it. Futuro picks up. Back to Sarda, and there goes Ishibashi. And Paula under the post. Yeah, that time Sada did manage to wriggle her arms free. The experienced combination, Sada and Ishibashi. Not much to do for Ishibashi there, Sada takes the ball in. There she goes, little pop out, pop out of contact. Ishibashi under the post. Paula Ishibashi, the 30-year-old at 5-1, had a try in Atlanta, has a smile here, and yet another one, and her team rolls 24-7 over China. So a quick look at uh, Pool B here with uh, Australia and France in the next head-to-head -to, -head to uh, establish who will go through as the uh, the top seeds. Australia at the moment on their points differential, looking to be the uh, the top seeded team as we head into day two and knockout rugby of this uh, World Rugby Women's Seven Series. Here from the city of Langford, we're here at the West Hills Stadium. And the next matchup, as we mentioned, was Australia versus France. Now, these guys uh, have played on seven occasions with Australia winning all seven. They last met in Atlanta back in March when Australia won that one by 26 points to 17. The average score is in Australia's favour by 24 points to seven. But France are making steady improvement under coach David Cortex. And uh, interesting enough, on that particular lineup, the um, the fact that uh, Chloe Pell and Christelle Leduff are actually on the bench. But uh, one player for me who's really caught the eye is the scrum half Pauline Baskara for Australia. Well, it's the strongest lineup that Tim Walsh can select in Shannon Parry, Sharni Williams, Amy Turner's caught the eye, while Elia Green on the wing for Australia has already scored five tries in Australia's opening two matches. They've yet to concede a point, Australia, here in Langford. Well, France have only conceded the one try to Brazil. I'm Scott Hastings. Alongside me, Canadian great Gareth Rees. Now, Gareth, great head-to-head -head here between these two teams. I reckon it could be a little bit closer on the average score. Well, I'm really looking forward to this one. You're right. They're close. One's joint second in the table. One's fourth in the table. Both very skilled teams. Not the biggest teams out here, but a lot of ball play. I think we'll see the ball move around quite a bit here. I'm really looking forward to this Australian side in particular, putting together some passes. So the final words. Brilliant huddle have been made by Captain Shani Williams. Shani Williams has scored two tries already. Leah Berard from the USA will officiate in this particular game. And well, how important is it for both these teams that you mentioned, Gareth, in the uh, the women's seven series, standing the top four teams, of course, across the six events. 
will qualify automatically for Rio and join Brazil, who are already in the uh, Sims competitions in both men's and women's tournaments as the host country. Sharni Williams then, former uh, qualified mechanic in Canberra, of course all the uh, Australians and indeed that uh, the French team are uh, professional in the uh, lead up to the Olympics in Rio. Bascara went on the switch, but the, uh, the pass went on the inside through Marjorie Mayans and coming down the wing now is Emily Gigelon. Gigelon well tackled there by Emily Tonegato. France recycling Marjorie Mayans. Well, there was a little kick dink over the top of uh, Leah Green. Green's got plenty of pace and uh, Caroline Ladonus on that foul wing for France. Couldn't get the ball. So switch play here from Sharni Williams on that far outside channel. Alicia Quirk, but it was a forward pass for Williams and just an overrun, I think it was, from Quirk. It was, and uh, possession given. She had a good chance there. The Australian defence came up midfield and the choice was to put the kick in behind. It was a bit too lateral. There was space in behind that Australian line. So good scrum ball here for France, about 30 metres out. So Pauline Mascara, student studying osteopathy. Played in the Rugby World Cup sevens in Moscow in 2013 and also played in France's 15s team back in the Rugby World Cup in France. Well, there's a really harsh call from Berard against France as they're put in, and she's called them for pushing early. So that's about managing the players out there. So uh, they'll be disappointed to give up that possession. Now, Gareth, we saw in the uh, the previous tie, Ilya Green, the try scorer. She uh, she starts the movement with a tap and go. She'll be involved down that blind side as play is switched. Big tackle comes in from Ilya Gigolo. But uh, Alicia Quirk. On the switchback play is Sharni Williams. We see a lot of this uh, switch and scissor play Go from on. the Australians. They're always trying to challenge the defensive alignment of the teams they play against. Yeah, they run across the front of the face and then drop it back. The late drop pass, they call it. This time they're penalised the breakdown. And the quick tap, France have a chance. On the far wide side, there's Mayans, Marjorie Mayans now. She got her pass away. That's the five metre line, Bascara. Good angle of running, Baskara on the switch play, and Baskara's in for the try. And that's the first try that Australia have conceded. Well, Baskara gets the try. She was at the heart of it. She took the quick tap. Reminds me of the great Mark Ella who said, if I touch the ball twice, the team will score. If I touch it three times, I will score. And watch his number four here, Pauline Baskara. Backs up. Here's her second touch coming up. She'll come into scrum half. Feed, and then look, she's going to get it back again. Third touch, she scores. Great play from her and her forward pack. Yeah, Pauline Bascara with her third try of day one here in the uh, sevens here in Langford. Well, she's only five foot two. That's one meter fifty-seven centimeters, but she packs a punch and a half. France five 0 in the lead. Good start for them, putting uh, Australia under pressure. Yeah, the Australians are guilty of turning the ball over there. Knock-ons costing them, but lots of pace and lots of power in this Australian side. So Baskarat, this time jump is uh, eventually taken by Australia. Look at the way they use the ball. Great space is uh, Shannon Parry wearing that distinctive scrum cap for Australia. Quirk loses possession, actually. Marjorie Mian's got her hands on the ball. And great switch play. Well, that was a forward pass, <laughs> but... Uh, Says France. Now France cut back on the angle. Caroline Ladonus up over the 22, but they've lost possession. Great counter attack by Amy Turner. Turner finds Sharni Williams. Sharni Williams just steps, but another big tackle for France. They're meeting Australia in the contact area. Yeah, you got to give them credit. They're standing up to all the big Australian players. Finally, a hint of an overlap. Three on two. There's that late drop, but again France snuffing it out. Emma Tonegato came back on the angle and uh, eventually Leah Barad penalises France for being offside but a good defensive effort from this French team in this uh, opening four minutes of play. Yeah, Ladagnusin shot there, she was guilty of coming up the side 
that's been the tone so far. They've been right in the faces, giving the Aussies no room. To Shani Williams. And Amy Turner standing out wide on this uh, blind side. But the switch play is to Shannon Parry. Tony Gatto. Speedster is Ilya Green on the outside. Green has just got to run in. This will be her sixth try here in Langford. She scored a hat trick against Brazil, two against China. It's one against France. Super six for Ilya Green. Well, there's no doubt Ilya Green can run him in from halfway. But credit her teammate Emma Tanagato drawing all three blue jerseys to her. Then the pass out the back, and it's just a simple run in. This is a Saturday afternoon and of the races. Well, I better remind you, Gareth, it's a Saturday afternoon of the Canada Sevens. She has been dominant here. Now, an outstanding player. Known as Bulla. Call her the Fijian Pearl as well. And uh, well, at 22 years of age, she certainly caught the eye. Junior wow. track athlete as well. Mian's turns, gives the pass. Pascara. Look at the way she plays the, the game. Little cross field kick. It's maybe overcooked. Oh, unless, the right they get, yeah, unless they get the bounce. It's twice they've had the right option, but poorly executed for France, and they've given away possession. Kaslik, oh, there's a big get. Uh, well, she's going to bring down the uh, player yeah, fine, safely. Fine, yes. oh, good refereeing there. She said it was fine, and I think it was. She put it down safely. Here's the tackle. She does get her over 90 degrees, but I think she puts yeah, her down flat, so play on, says the ref. Baskara then. Polly Nubaskara. With a twin sister, Marie. She'll be watching maybe online. Bonjour, Marie. Baskara then. She's happy to run into traffic, isn't she? Isn't she? she reminds me of the male uh, equivalent, Terry Burahua, for the men's French team. She's everywhere and busy. Everywhere and busy. Mians. You know, the wide outside pass is uh, Ladanus on the wing. Green just comes in with a tackle. And, uh, well, great defence there because she used the touchline as the extra defence to Delia Green. Well, with the pace that she's got, she's able to do that. But an excellent first half from France. There's the handoff. Too late. Half time then in this Pool B game. It's an even match. Australia 7, France 5. Il faut être plus réactif au tour de ruck. Le tour de ruck, on est trop lent, on alimente dans le sens, on bad. Il y a deux, trois fois, les retours sont bons à jouer pour elle parce qu'on rééclate pas assez vite et qu'on ne vient pas alimenter le bon côté. Levez la tête et appelez-vous, celles qui sont loin, appelez-vous, vous êtes les yeux des autres. Deuxième chose, dans la zone de plaquage, vous allez aller aux jambes, encore plus bas, parce que c'est là que ça va se gagner. Faites tomber vite et l'assistant de plaqueuse arrive et on continue le boulot dans les rucks. Il faut continuer à travailler plein pot dans les rucks. D'accord Ok very physical in the tackle and he wants him to be very tough at the ruck time well even you can translate that we can win this he's saying we can win this fanny horta the leader the inspiration of behind this team Well, wherever you are watching this around the world, why don't you uh, send us a tweet, hashtag Canada Sevens or at World Rugby Sevens. We understand that um, we're trending out in Australia and we're uh, six in the list in Canada. So it's really caught the attention of the rugby world. I'm Scott Hastings, your play-by-play -play commentator. Alongside me, Gareth Reese 
former uh, international rugby great for Canada. And uh, while well, we've been well hosted here in the beautiful city of Langford, watching some great rugby action unfold, Pascara oh, then tackled out by a cracking oh, tackle by Shannon Perry. And this yep. is a this is a close game, Gareth. Uh, you may recall that I mentioned earlier on that the average score between these two teams is 24 points to seven. And uh, well, this is far closer than uh, that uh, average would uh, dictate. Yeah, it feels like we're at the business end of the tournament right now, almost like knockout play here with these important fixtures. Uh, Quirk did well to bring the uh, play down to Shannon Parry. Parry tackled by Elodie Guglion. Bascara will take this ball, turnover ball for France. Can they make it work? Sure, and cool was good from Camille Gressino, but it's a bit scrappy. Good play by Shannon Izar. She recycled herself. Now she goes for the chip with Castle. We kicked to score, he said. Can she get it to score? Castle tackled and under pressure from Shannon Izar, but uh, she was penalised for not letting go. The Australian back, Charlotte Clark, Catholic. This girl played. Uh, well, that was it. sorry. My apologies. It was Alicia Quirk there who got back. She did well to gather the rolling ball. Perhaps a harsh call against the French. So Australia rightfully slowing this down. They are up by that two points, that one conversion. Catholic with the twin ponytail, single ponytail is Alicia Quirk and. Quirk throws a poor pass over the top. It didn't find Amy Turner. And territory now with Marjorie Mayhans. Two and two. It's already set. It's already set. Two and two. Well, again, the French looking for a quick line out. You know, by rights, the Australian player is not allowed to stand within five meters. The referees turned a blind eye to it again. Well, Caroline Ladanus is being replaced by uh, Lina Guren. Guerin, well, she last played in Sao Paulo, missed out in uh, Atlanta. Two, two in. Made two a in debut in Guangzhou in uh, 2013. And still no Christelle Ledouf on the pitch with a game that's on a knife edge at the moment. Interesting selection by Coach Cortex. Yeah, Christelle Ledouf, she's uh, stripped down in front of our commentary position. Chloe Pell might be involved by Amy Turner. Turner feeds to Tony Gatto on the outside, Greens. On a two and one, Tony Gatto takes it deep down into the France 10 meter line. Amy Turner goes in to support, but it's loose there at the back for the Australians. But tidying up, as always, is Sharni Williams. Tony Gatto to Quirk. Alicia Quirk holds the ball in two hands. Find Charlotte Caslick with the overhead pass. Caslick cuts an angle. Caslick for the try line. Put down in the tackle. Superb tackle for France. But the overlap was created, and in under the post, Emma Tony Gatto. Great, great sevens try for the Australians. Well, she's exhausted. She deserves that try. Two or three moments in it, she kept the ball alive. Great angle to run back, but look at this determination from the French, who it may have been a ponytail she used to bring her down. But two meters short, the Australians regroup, the ball goes wide, and Emma Tony Gatto Jogs it in. Yeah, Emma Tony Gatto, member of the uh, women's 13 team, the Gillaroos, that won the World Cup in 2013 in Australia, out into a 14 to 5 lead. And with only a few minutes, three minutes, 15 left on the clock, it'll have to be France to score next if they're going to pull this tie back from the brink. Yeah, those conversions so important, so two scores required for the French. Sharni Williams, 21 tries in her women's seven series career. This is her 13th tournament. Shannon Parry did well on that side, and Alicia Quirk was great. Tony Gatto, this is Sharni Williams. Caslick, Elia Green. Green with the easy run in, and Australia suddenly pull away. The confidence has returned to the green and gold. Yeah, the experience and the skill coming through. Clinical stuff through the hands, catch and pass. Draw the defender, and when this woman gets the ball in space, it's all over. 
Well, Gareth, when we talked about the fact that the top try scorer for Emily Cherry wasn't here, obviously injured, we wondered how much pressure this would put on Ilya Green and the way the team have played. However, she's been finishing off some marvellous free-flowing movement across this destroying team. Well, hasn't she responded seven tries in less than three games? So she's been on the end of everything. Elia Green then used to play for the Melbourne Tigers at basketball. Well, Australia rugby will be delighted that she turned her attention to the wonderful game of Rugby Sevens. The birthplace was in Melrose in Scotland in 1883. Maybe these girls one day might go and play in that uh, famous arena at the Green Yards in Scotland. Green, huge tackle, aggressive oh. turnover, ball, Shani Williams. What a try by Australia. Aggressive in the tackle, the turnover was made. And the ever-present Shani Williams dots down for Australia. You've got it, Scott. It was aggressive, and what a bounce she got, ripping the ball from Grassino. It pops free. Look at that work on defense this time for Elia Green. And Shawnee Williams gets the bounce and just reward. Well, as we often talk about in seven aside rugby, the pendulum has just swung massively in Australia's favor. Again, Elliot Green, who ripped that ball loose when there was a little bit of a push and shove earlier on. She was the first one in the French face. So she's obviously a feisty character, not afraid to challenge the opposition. Shawnee Williams unsuccessful with the conversion. And as uh, Australia dominate this one, a few more fresh legs coming on the field. Gary John is here, who's the head coach uh, and head of sevens rugby for Australia. And he has a program where the men's program and the women's team, they actually have a couple of days where they actually train together and they've devised a game where the men are obviously short numbers. And it's really good for them to share ideas and share experiences. And uh, I think it's something going forward that we'll see other countries looking to do. These Australian women obviously benefiting from it. Yeah, it was interesting speaking to Gary yesterday watching this team uh, train and saying that uh, when, they, uh, when the guys get the ball, if they get tackled, two of the players have to go down on the ball and then it all is about Australia finding space out wide. Yeah, very innovative stuff. Well, the fans aren't giving up. Basket up. That was it, Lorian Lizar. Lizar, who's in off the bench. Crystal Ladoffin at the action. We step back against the green. France trying to work hard under Camille Grassineau. Oh, good hands from France. They're keeping the ball alive. Mian steps back in despite the tackle of Gemma Etheridge. Australia working hard in the defensive chores. Interesting watching coaches. Tim Walsh and also manager Scott Bowen, who is involved with this team, shouting from the sidelines there. It's been an impressive start to day one here in Langford for the Australian team. That's their third win on day one. It's likely they'll go through as top seeds through to the knockout phases. Full time, Australia 24, France 5. So let's take a look at how it's uh, shaken out in Pool A as New Zealand with a perfect 2-0 start. England ran into Fiji in that 19-all draw. They will be around the corner shortly. And coming up next will be Fiji, who uh, managed to tie England and Spain, losing to uh, New Zealand 45-10 and being dropped by England 31-14. 
I'm Bill Seward. Next to me, Gareth Reese. The team's in the tunnel. I'm thinking of going out to that pond and seeing if a <laughs> lure would actually entice a fish to come after it. But in the meantime, we have Fiji and Spain. And as you see, they have met three previous times with Fiji holding that 2-1 advantage. And it was Fiji, Gareth, that uh, put a little charge into New Zealand in the opening match of, uh, of their day. They did, and what a result to tie England. That's a fantastic result for them. Points they needed in this pool. And to rack up uh, more points against Spain, but really spirited stuff from the Fijians. It was interesting, too, in that England match that Fiji, with rare exception, maybe one brief loss of the ball, they had it pretty much the last three minutes of that uh, second half. And you started to see them actually celebrate their great, their country's great love of the sevens game. And now the women are getting involved, and there's some beautiful one handed passes and even passes being made after being over the line. So, uh, Great action and living up to their wonderful seven. If you're uh, scouting out to Fiji, of course, uh, the captain who leads the way out here, Anna Maria Rongitha, has some skills. And the wearing the eight is Lavinia Tanai with two tries against New Zealand and two tries against England. There is Rongitha holding it up. Hi. Great great here. All these teams, of course, have been uh, training in Victoria. This is my hometown here, and I went to pick up my son from uh, daycare, and the Fijian women's team were there training, and his class got to have a little look at them, and then at the end of training, they sang a song. They got Ooh, in a circle nice. and sang a, a beautiful hymn, and the kids were quite blown away that these uh, very physical women were able to sing such a beautiful melody at the end. Beatrice Benvenuti of Italy, the referee. Spain in the red, Fiji in the white. That was a great camera angle in the huddle there. I was wondering if that was one of those drones they were flying by <laughs> earlier. In the air and uh, up high, tapped away by Del Pond, taken by Fiji and uh, Ella Marama. And holding on a bit too long, so Barbara Pla brings it back for Spain. Pla weaving her way, looking for uh, Patricia Garcia. That spills, and the whistle will bring it back with the knock-on and the scrum to Fiji. One thing you don't want if you're Spain is careless possessions like that, giving Fiji possession. They're too big, they're too strong. You want to make Fiji defend. And uh, Spain not able to string enough phases together there. You keep giving them chances too. They will find that magic where they're uh, sprinting down the pitch and doing the wraparound, no look, one handed, whatever pass, and you're being scored upon. So just under a minute in, and that's probably reset. The ball was never hooked. Interesting formation you see in our wide shot there with a bit of a V behind the Fiji scrum, one receiver behind, and then two wide players. So forcing Spain to defend the whole width of the pitch. Rangi, try it again. Fine. Under the watchful eye of Barbara Pla, Rangitha gets it and moves it to Tanai off the foot, and the chase is on. And it looks like able to make the grab is Laura Esprit. Esprit. The Fijian hands got on it. Now the question, did they do it lawfully and will they be able to bring it out of there? Garcia gets it to Del Pon and a pretty good hit put on Rivera now by Tanai. Garcia gets popped but able to unload to Esprit and to touch she goes. Fiji through Nakita Nakato trying to take a quick one. There's a Spanish player just down on the side. Right where the lineup's going to be. She's getting treatment. Yeah, the last ball carrier, Laura Esprit. Taken out. One of the uh, prides of the Barcelona club. And a look at Leticia Nangato coming across. Actually, Nangato got it a bit later. One of her teammates able to get the job done. That throw clearly not straight. So 
Technical breakdown for Fiji. At this level, the World Series, you cannot fail to execute your set piece. And Spain have interestingly chosen another lineout rather than the scrum. Again, the size of this Fijian team, I'm surprised at that decision. Let's see if they go instead of long and up high. Instead, they do, and it is batted around by Fiji as on the motor comes Sabu. Asanati Sabu stepping through. The fend on Garcia. Patricia fights back and brings her inside the 22. Nangasu off to Tanai. Marama. Tanai already with four tries in the tournament. Has a couple of doubles in two games. Tucked in the corner it is. Fiji able to bring it back towards center. And Siata. Priscilla Siata in the 11. Sabu's out here. And Sabu against Berta Garcia. In tow is the captain. And Sabu, you got to make the tackle on her. She's so big and she puts it down. I knew that was the danger coming, Gareth. Got to show a little more respect on her when she has the ball. Too big and too strong. Fiji throwing the ball around. They get the bounces. Here she is just one-on-one. -on -one. She's got a little support coming. She shows, she goes. And when you don't hold on to her, she'll do this to you. Keep driving those legs and get it dotted down. She did it twice against England. And she's got first blood here against Spain. Asanate Sabu had 40 points in Dubai. So when you put 40 points on in a tournament, you've uh, sort of thrown it down. Now, now I know when the men are playing in Fiji they tend the villages that only have the generators on for a few hours a day tend to keep them on late so they can watch. I hope you're watching at home. I hope you're celebrating your women's team as they're going for an important victory here in pool A action after a great result against England so they can go through in the top eight. Put up in the air and the battle on between Tanai and Pla and won by Fiji as uh, Siata pushing <laughs> get out of my way Fender out of the way heading back in there is Githa now off the foot of Tanai Tanai not able to come with it Del Pond going for it Berta Garcia has it off to Barbara Pla off the Two laces, she makes the catch and then in turn gives to Maria Rivera. With some tired bodies out there at the end of this first half. A minute and 20 to go in the first half with Fiji holding that 5 nothing lead on the try by Asanate Sabu. A little Ooh. high tackle maybe on Del Pond. We'll see. If doesn't appear to be an advantage play. Referee Benvenuti, the Italian, letting them go at it. There's some high shots that haven't been called. Spain penalized at the breakdown for not releasing. Back it comes to Mangato at 5'10 and the big time laces. And away goes Nangosa. Nangosa putting it down and a 10 0 lead for Fiji. The try for Fiji, score number eight, Lavinia Tanai. Well, it was a beautiful one-handed pass, and in the end, I think it was Lavinia and Tanai, Tanai, sorry, who got it down. That's the offload, and she just scooted up the left-hand sideline. It is Lavinia Tanai and her fifth try in the tournament. Yeah, this has been a fast paced first half. Lots of contact, lots of running. Another conversion to come. Just pushed wide, but the Hooters sounded, and we will have the restart. Fiji up 10 0 on Spain. With time The first half, but we will have a final play on the restart tonight. 
with a moon shot taken by Patricia Garcia, who may be almost held captive there at a mall, but uh, Pla spins it outside. Berta Garcia. I'm guessing the old high tackle's working in this contest, huh? They're reaching up. That one goes to touch, and that should end the first half. We shall see as and Fiji the first half with, the score. Fiji with a 10 nothing lead. Berta Garcia and her mates going to need to do some work as they will listen to Jose Antonio Barrio. Spain 10th in the overall standings. The Fiji is eighth. They get a try from uh, Sabu and Tanai. And they will listen to their coach, Iliesa Tanavula, the former New Zealand Sevens and Auckland winger. We in turn head into the Spain huddle. Volvemos a entrar, entrar en el partido. Volvemos a entrar en el partido. Volvemos a recuperar el balón. Insisto, vamos a buscar el balón. Si hay un balón dividido, lo buscamos. Es, estamos empezando a jugar a la velocidad de ellas. Si hay un balón aquí y empezamos a intentar buscar un balón a ver qué hacemos o no. Hay un balón y entramos. Que se que vengan toda la defensa y muy rápido sacamos el balón. De acuerdo. Aquí nos han pillado porque no tenemos profundidad. En la vuelta hay que buscar profundidad y hay que moverlas. Si jugamos en este espacio van a tener que con los brazos que tienen no van no nos va a valer. De acuerdo. Hay que entrar. Si ellas empiezan a cerrar aquí hay que entrar. De acuerdo. Y en la defensa vamos a poder subir un poco más. De acuerdo. Estamos eh. Son dos ensayos y ganamos. Dale, dale, dos dale, ensayos dale, y dale, ganamos. Dale, 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 you almost sent some of the girls just saying, hey, coach, have you seen the size of these feet kids? <laughs> That's a great plan, but they really are bullying the Spanish team. And I think the Fijians may have found something here, that they are bigger physically, and they're really taking it. They're England to a certain extent, really attacking them in the contact area, and maybe sort of the hallmark of the Fijian women's side going forward. Captain Ellie Martinez getting in the final few words in the huddle for the halftime. And I'm with you, Gareth, that they're they're in a battle. I'm not sure what the translation is for get after it, but that's what uh, Juan Antonio Barrio's squad needs to do. Yes, and they Spain. need to do against a very physically imposing uh, Fijian squad. They do. They need to get organized, move the ball away quickly, and up the tempo of this game. Ready to go, down 10 nothing is uh, Spain kicking to Fiji, and Nasanati Sabu had a first half try and looking for yet another. Gets it stripped away by Berta Garcia. And Spain. Another sloppy ruck, Spain not able to get the ball away. No, they didn't, and able to counter is uh, Fiji, and now with possession. As you mentioned, it's dangerous when you keep doing this. Sabu with an escort. Let's see if she uh, looks back at <laughs> Rangifa, does a jump or two, and then puts it down. Asanate Sabu. Well, you've got to play the sevens game with your head up. And as Fiji stole the ball at this ruck, I think it's Lavinia tonight who comes in the scrap position. She spots there's no one covering that short side, and Sabu's got a free run in, in the end. Here she's trying to make the conversion a bit easier. Looking inside, but decides to dot it down herself. That's the confidence they're playing with at the moment. And the kick off the mark. Sabu with her second to score of the contest. There's some of the local Polynesians. Good communities here on the west coast and south of the border in the states. A lot of people coming up to support. And a 15 nothing lead. For Fiji. With five minutes to go. And taking over possession of that restart. Nangasau to Rangat Rongitha. Oh, the reverse spin pass. Sabu, oh, the look away and the look away and then the dribbler. This is sloppy at the moment. On Finally, Spain have some space, but they decided to run back. 
They need to move it away. They need to move the ball into space. Good solid hit to Nye puts on Garcia. Back it comes toward the center and back with it near her own try line. She's in all sorts of trouble. Yep. And there is going to be a call made here. And out. It's carried over by Red, by the Spaniards. Five meter scrum. Ball was held up over the line, carried in by Spain, so will be a Fiji put in. Maria Consado wearing the seven. And two wide Going to check in for Spain. Also uh, changes for Fiji with Rataluba, the one and the six, Ravisa in. Bill Seward and Gareth Reese with you, with you here at the uh, Canada Women's Seventh in Crouch. West Hill Stadium in Langford. Set. Sun getting into that set position. The lights are on. <laughs> and wow. Garcia fending off a couple of throat latches there and yeah, Patricia Garcia giving as good as she got there. Big hit from the Fijian, but she wrote it right through. Again, they had space, and they're not using the width. So Spain back at it. Pla to Casado to Echevarria. The swell's got to go quickly from this point now. Blind side. Del Pond, Angela weaving her way through in the takedown by Nangasa. Pla with the uh, look off and Barbara Pla in a race with Rataluba. But coming in to help is Ciada and Pla across the line in the put down <laughs> for Spain. The triumph of Spain, score number four, Barbara Pla. Well, her 17th try was an individual effort. She backed herself. Her team has not been up to much. She went off the right foot. Great step here. And then she needed the pace. She knew the ball had to go on the other arm. And here come the attentions of the Fijians. Only the short grab, which was not enough to stop Barbara Pla. The veteran of the two Rugby World Cup sevens has Spain on the board at 15 to five. And with two minutes to go, there's still some subs coming off the pitch, but that does not uh, deter Ravisa. And Ravisa, Tiamima heading to the corner against uh, Patricia Garcia, and she's going to cross over and put it down. <laughs> Two signals for back home. Ravisa thanking the heavens. Shades of uh, the great one, Serevi, as she scooted down the left sideline. There's the hit step. You saw some folks just getting yeah. out of the way. The subs were a little, a little slow in uh, getting off the green. Twenty to five, Fiji with the lead in this Pool A showdown. The restart going to be taken by Maria Rivera. Rivera goes down and Casado runs into Nangato's grasp. The try scorer Pla to Patricia Garcia. Back to Pla and Ciata's there and Priscilla as she tried to run down Pla before. With the Making Spanish the tactics. There. Sorry, Bill, but just the Spanish tactics trying to take on the Fijians in the physical game. They need to get the ball moving. Well, you also can't take them on with the, you know, your five foot four, 130 <laughs> pound person. But they get the whistle and a chance to come back if they could. Yeah. 
Echeverria right at halfway to Barbara Pla. Pla with the foot. Given Chase Garcia off the leg of Ravisa. Rangifa in there to try to extricate <laughs> the ball. Referee said play on, but clearly it was a rut. To touch it goes, and that is the full time. And Fiji, after a loss to New Zealand, a draw with England, and progression into a victory over Spain. 20 to 5 is the final score. So Pule sees that New Zealand on top at this moment. Fiji just lying in second position. New Zealand will be playing uh, England next in uh, this match 16 here on the women's seven series here in the city of Langford. I wouldn't mind a wee dip in there earlier on. The temperature's been sitting nicely balmy. <laughs> on your own. Yeah. It'll be a bit warmer than the North Sea back in... This game, New Zealand versus England. New Zealand lead 5-2 in the series. They last met in Amsterdam in the Cup semi-final. New Zealand won that one by 26 points to 10. It was over 2013 it was in Houston when... England beat New Zealand in the semi-finals. Well, for New Zealand, it really is an experienced team with Sarah Goss leading and captaining her country. Keep an eye out for this try scoring talents of Portia Woodman. If she can get 10 more points in this tie, it will see her through the 400 points barrier. Kayla McAllister has scored 59 tries for England. Well, a little bit of a surprise that Abigail Chamberlain steps back down onto the bench, or starts the game on the bench. But keep an eye out for Emily Scarrett in the centre. Joanne Watmore has scored four tries in England's two opening games. She is a threat every time she gets the ball. But it's the skill and the pace and support of New Zealand against the nous of England. England, of course, who are the Rugby World Cup champions in 2014 in the 15 aside code. New Zealand are the world champions at the seven-a-side sport. Alongside me, Scott Hastings, is Sue Day. Sue, we've had a great day in the commentary box, and uh, we're coming to the end of day one here in Langford. It's been a super setting, and this should ignite the crowd here who've stayed on to watch the last few games. It certainly should. Obviously, New Zealand are favourites, but lots of experience on the pitch for England. I was looking to see who was going to lead the England team out in the absence of Abigail Chamberlain. And it was Emily Scarrett, um, one of the younger players on the team, but so experienced now, one of the top players at the 15s World Cup. So players like Scarrett, Staniford, Joe Watmore, Alice Ritz on the pitch, lots of experience, but of course New Zealand with, with Woodman and McAllister. Can anybody stop them? That's the question. Tyler Nathan Wong's also uh, been in uh, magnificent form for New Zealand. New Zealand. Beat Fiji by 38 points to 12. They beat Spain by 45 points to 10. Will they dispatch this England team in similar style? Michaela Staniford takes the ball into the contact. Now England just a little bit flat in their lineup there. Alice Richardson had to just straighten things. Natasha Hunt goes in to clear. This is Joanne Watmore up against McAllister, but look how quickly the defence is up from McAllister. She made the tackle on Watmore. 
and making the tackle now on Marley Packer. They move it, once they move it wide, they find a little bit of space, but Kelly Brazier is good with the tackle for this New Zealand team. What more? Down the flank she goes. Now, can she out sprint Nathan Wong and McAllister? In fact, it's Portia Woodman, my apologies, Portia Woodman with the tackle. Follow up play though is good for Natasha Hunt. Back into what more ball intercepted at the back there by Hazel Tubick for New Zealand. But picked up there by England's number eight, Riley Packer. Try time here for England, Amy Wilson Hardy. Very well worked for England. They had to get up in New Zealand's faces first up if ever they're going to have a chance in this game. We've seen New Zealand, what we've seen them do so well is in the opposition's defensive 22 off kickoff, get the pressure on England, managed to clear it out, threw the ball away there. Very good work in the breakdown. Marley Packer right on her shoulders, clearing up. A little pop away, slightly higher than Amy Wilson Hardy. She does not care. Ball in her hands and ball over the line. Great start from England. So the conversion was missed by Amy Wilson Hardy. Well, she'll remember the try in Langford City, where she scored against New Zealand. And it was a big call for Simon Middleton to start Amy Wilson Hardy, one of the younger, less experienced players on the team. Her first start against New Zealand. It's paid off so far. Yeah, we've got a first cap versus uh, South Africa and Colorado. <laughs> big chase was good by Marley Packer, and well, that forced the error of Portia Woodman. Woodman knocked the ball on, but it must have touched an England hand first of all. Yeah, it looked like it came off Portia Woodman first, didn't it? Absolutely. But the referees have judged that it didn't go forward off Woodman, so ball to New Zealand. Maybe a bit unlucky there, England, but they're, they're always tight calls, those. Yeah, James Umbelumbio from Fiji. Well, the pass was uh, poor by Brazier, but picked up by McAllister. Kayla McAllister, what more has to go? McAllister's just going to sprint the lane, and McAllister... Well, she scored two already on day one in Langford. This is her hat trick try across the three games. And McAllister, 60 tries in her World Series career. Not a bad strike rate, that. Not a bad record. That's what Kayla McAllister can do to you. Emily Scarrett's no slouch in defense. Joe Watmore's no slouch, but she just goes around the outside. Natasha Hunt, quickest player on the England team. Chases are down, stops are going under the post, but nobody's catching Kayla McAllister. Maybe tough on England, they didn't have the point at the scrum, but goodness me, New Zealand made it count. Kayla McAllister, every time the opposition scores, she gets the next one back. 295 points. In fact, that's 300 points. Kayla McAllister has now scored 60 tries and her teammate Portia Woodman alongside her. Just shows how potent they are, doesn't it? The top two in the all time. Yeah, and like two peas in a pod, they work so strongly with each other. The try was unconverted, we're all square at five apiece. England making a fist of this tie so far. Sarah Goss will just step. Slow things down. Tyler Nathan Wong playing seven and outside her. Yeah, England putting Emily Scarrett in that kickoff receipt position, really matching up against Sarah Goss. And Emily Scarrett doing very well. What England have to do is get the second player in there quickly and protect the ball catcher once she's caught it. Sarah Goss, so good, so good in that area. Sarah Goss was uh, recommended as the. World Rugby Women's Sevens Player of the Year as part of the uh, the lineup. Knock on at the front, so the error falls in England's favour. There's Michaela Staniford, been a great servant for English rugby. IRB Player of the Year in 2012, over 57 15 caps as well, and now part of the fixture of the Sevens team. Doesn't yeah. perhaps have the pace that she once did have, but still a great workhorse. 
Oh, wraparound movement is good from England, but uh, can the relief set a lot more on the outside? England under pressure, but trying to get the support runners as they build up from deep. There's well, it's a kick away position, Tyler Nathan Wall is covering for New Zealand. What more? Kind of slowed as she went towards the ball. Maybe a tactic uh, in this game of coach Simon Middleton to put the ball behind the New Zealanders. <laughs> Kelly Bridges just has a tap and go. By Watmore. In over the top goes Marley Packer. Marley Packer's won the ball for England. Superb turnover possession for England. Now, can they make it count? Oh, the gap opened up there. Alice Richardson up to the halfway line. Goss with the tackle. Brazier comes away with it. It's ding dong stuck here between New Zealand and England. Brazier turning, twisting. One more with the tackle. But the support comes in there from Porsche Woodman. Woodman to Tubic. Tubic. This is incredible stuff here. Marley Packer. Once again in the movement, protecting ball for England. Well, England are going to have to go coast to coast. Break out by Scarrett, is it? Well, all the way. Well, we've had seen one already, and this will be the second. The breakout try is good here from Amy Wilson Hardy. And didn't England do well on the defensive chores to score at the other end? Goodness me, I'm completely out of breath watching that. That really is end-to-end -end stuff. New Zealand were, what, two inches from the England try line? They just managed to defend it. Michaela Staniford and Joe Watmore stopping Kelly Brecci get over the line. Then Emily Scarrett breaks out the offload. To she looks up and she thinks, goodness me, I've got to sprint 90 metres, but there's no one in the way. What a finish. Really spirited stuff from England. Yeah, she's looked balanced uh, in her times taking these tries. So Amy Wilson Hardy, well, two against New Zealand, England, leading by 12 points to five. Great stuff. Stay with us and let's listen in to coach we hold on to it. Sean so Horan. Okay, now jamming quite a tight on four. Okay, we hold it there, suck them in, and then work that middle, then strike hard again. If we have to go multiple phase, we have to go multiple phase. Again, when it comes down to our, our defense, it's our alignment and it's our chop tackles. We've got to make those. Okay, you've got them, eh? Okay, we've got them. So what they're going to do is they're going to get their kickoff. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes on a two or a five. We work in our threes and we just go to work. So our key ties our threes, okay? That's what we do. We come forward, eh, Gail? Okay, they're going to work it, okay? And we just play. All good? Here we go. Fuck yeah. Absolutely. Well, apologies once again for... Uh, the language coming out of the uh, half-time uh, huddles. A little bit of frustration, perhaps, clearing in, uh, coming in from uh, Sean Horan. And a lot of numbers. Twos, fives, threes, fours, he'd lost me. <laughs> but I think the key one is that he does talk about the pods of three working in the... How do you get in support? How do you clear the ball out of contact? How do you retain possession for England? They defended really well in that first half, and... Uh, well, the words of wisdom coming in from uh, Simon Middleton and also to the left of your picture with the, uh, the keep rugby clean is um, the uh, support coach for um, this, uh, this team, Susie Appleby. Father Richard, the next president of the RFU, there's Susie. So Alice Richardson will uh, start proceedings in the second half as Kelly Brazier looks on. Sean Horan asking the uh, team to uh, trust, trust their systems. Seven minutes then. Last time that England beat uh, New Zealand was in Houston in February 2013, but England breaking out once again from Marley Packer, and Packer's packing a punch as Watmore's in support. Big tackle comes in from Brazier. Portia Woodman takes ball to the deck. 
But uh, a previous knock-on picked up by uh, referee James Umbalumbio. Second half started as the first one finished, didn't it? Some big hits going in. A, mis a rare mistake of the kick-off from Sarah Goss led to England ball, but then Kelly Brazier's hit to get the ball back for New Zealand. Natasha Hunt wearing a number two for England, putting Tyler Nathan Wong under pressure. And that uh, Gil Broughton is in off uh, the, the subs bench. Portia Woodman has to go to deck. Better play here from this New Zealand team. A oh, lovely, lovely breakaway try here. Honey Harimi, wonderful balance running from Honey Harimi. Pulls one back here for the New Zealand team. Yeah, very good runner. 30 tries in a World Series career. She gets the ball in a bit of space and you're in trouble defensively and that's exactly what happened. So this set conversion to tie up the scores. 12 each it is, but uh, Honey hearing me. Once she broke in behind that defence, no sweeper for England, and she strode out. Yeah, such a good finisher. Sevens, fifteens, league, you name it. She was out of the squad for a little while. Great addition back into the squad for New Zealand. Her and or Carla her heifer out in that wide position, the forwards were not a bad pair to be able to choose from. Yeah, the 33-year-old giving such experience to this New Zealand team. One eye, I'm sure, for New Zealand on the Rio Summer Games. Breakaway play here from England, great. Strong running from Natasha Hunt. Emily Scarrett has to go in with ball, but it's turnover position, but it's bopped into Amy. Wilson Hardy's hands and now Emily Scarrett takes it up to the 22. Brazier in with another good tackle. Ball recycled. Natasha Hunt in the fly half position. Alice Richardson. There was a switch on. Watmore's on the outside. Watmore shrugs off the attention of Portia Woodman. Strong in the tackle. Marley Packer up to the 22 meter line. This is a physical old encounter as Tubit comes in from an offside position. Oh, England called back there, New Zealand hadn't retreated and they just hadn't got the ball back to where the penalty needed to be taken from, so it all calms down for a couple of minutes. What a game this is, though. Natasha Hunt, she'll just tap and go, Alice Richards. Richardson is outside her, Watmore is on the far touchline. Will they switch the play back here in midfield? No, they'll come open. This is Scarrett to Staniford. Amy Wilson Hardy offloads to Scarrett. Scarrett works hard. Michaela Staniford slows the play down. Short, tight angles are running as Marley Packer. Packer, Staniford clears. Two and one if they can move it quickly. Scarrett. Oh, but Amy Wilson Hardy ran a cut angle. You see, so frustrated they were in there. If Amy Wilson Hardy just. Kept the outside, slight miscommunication between Scarrett and Hardy. Off the bench, Carla Hohipa. She will take over from Honey Hirumi. And Sarah Goss informs instruction, but an injury here for England. And uh, England skipper Abigail Chamberlain comes on to uh, the pitch. And, uh, well, a sore knee from Marley Packer. Marley Packer has really played a part in this uh, final tie. Of course, England won the first game by 31 points to 14 over Spain. They drew against Fiji 19 all. And searching for a place in the quarterfinals. Brazier takes it up. Alice Richardson hangs on. And here's the stepper, Gail Broughton. And Broughton, she'll go the lead. And this young speedster from Taranaki will score a fifth try of the afternoon. What more? Tries to bring her down. In fact, has she kept the ball up? I think she's kept the ball up. Joanne Watmore, unbelievable! 
It was an amazing chase from Duane Mott. We couldn't tell from here whether the ball was grand or not, whether or not it was. What a spirited chase either way. Didn't, we couldn't see it get grounded, but we just couldn't see from here. Oh, right, he's given it. Well, Gail Broden, interesting enough, she looked as though she she thought she had scored. Yeah, what more made a tremendous effort, didn't she? And Gail Broden with her fifth try here in Langford, and what a run it was. Such lovely balance foot where Joe Watmore goes in, holds it up, but then, yeah, yes. there you can see the ball gets grounded, and making a tackle at that sort of place is almost impossible to hold the player up, but. But just to get there in the first place, Joanne Watmore had run the diagonal length of the pitch. Wanted to keep the finish at least out wide. New Zealand then a slender five points in the lead. Kelly <laughs> McAllister uh, looks on as to the rest of the uh, New Zealand bench. Instructions being shouted out. Nervousness amongst this uh, team. Kelly Blythe, Salika Winilata. Charlotte Scanlon looks on. One minute on the clock. This one's in the absolute balance, isn't it? Tremendous kickoff. Sky goes up, spills ball forward. But the knock on given against England's Emily Scarrett. Such a good matchup though between Goss and Scarrett. Normally you see Goss have it all her own way in that spot, fielding the kicks from Nathan Wong, but Scarrett giving as good as she gets. Really good to see the competition between two world-class players under the high ball. Well, if you enjoyed uh, the action, let's uh, knock out rugby tomorrow. So who do you think is going to win this tournament? Just uh, why don't you tweet us at World Rugby Sevens or hashtag Canada Sevens. We want to hear from you folks, so get tweeting. Some fantastic performances today. We've seen uh, Elia Green with a hat trick. We've seen some brilliant tries here from Gail Broughton. And England have played their part as well. Joanne Watmore and Amy Wilson Hardy. Broughton teases but fires a pass across to Portia Woodman. Woodman goes on the outside and Woodman's going to be in for a try. 395 points. 17. Ninth try in the World Series career. And she is such a strike runner for this New Zealand team. She is. That's the absolute gas that the England have probably over. So the New Zealand have over England. The ball bounces. The defence stops. Portia Woodman picks it up. A bang. She's gone so quick. A back round right under the post. And that's the beauty of sevens, isn't it? England were right in it, but the skill that comes through on the back of the game. Well, it was a cracking game of rugby as both these teams will go into the uh, knockout section tomorrow in day two. New Zealand beat England by 24 points to 12. Ready for the Pool C get-together between Russia and South Africa. This is the fifth meeting between the two, with Russia holding a 4-0 advantage in the series. As you see, they got together in Atlanta, and Russia rolled 43 to nothing over South Africa in pool play. Of course, when you look at Russia, you look at the 9 and 10. Uh, Nadezhda Kudinova and Ekaterina Kazakova 
as they get together and when they do that can spell problems for the opposition on the South African side. They have had a, a tough go so far with the USA and Canada would love to string it together here uh, earlier today we saw uh, South Africa and uh, Martha Pienaar was uh, injured she is not in the starting lineup here do not know the extent of that one but uh, South Africa will move on with the likes of uh, Helen Ace Barnard Jordan Grein, Gadu, Simers, and uh, Creel. There, the Russian squad, seven in the world standings. Latvia! A 26-15 loss to Canada, and then an even closer 17-14 defeat, the U.S. over Russia. And Jess Baird of New Zealand match number 49 in her fairly young refereeing career Bill Seward and former English captain Sue Day with you glad you could join us at worldrugby.org this the Canada women's sevens in Bonnie Langford British Columbia and stepping away is uh, Faisat Hamadova Hamadova Needed to be run down by Varoska Grain without the jersey number, but it's not going to happen. And Baiza had a couple tries against Canada, one against the USA, and opens the scoring against South Africa. 48 tries in a World Series career, not a bad total. And there she goes, just shrugging off tackles, exactly the start South Africa didn't want to put the ball into her hands in a bit of space. Grain just just desperately grabbing for the tackle there couldn't make it we'll get the kiss of the ball from Hamidova try scored no conversion made but uh, Hamidova as you see with 48 career tries 31 behind Portia Woodman who we just saw ringing the bell a few times uh, earlier today and on the restart. You noticed earlier, too, that uh, Daria Fifilova, wearing the three for Russia, has the uh, kicking duties. South Africa, first possession. And the far side being thrown to touch is Fume Zagadu, who had a try against the United States. Yeah, she's the pace on this South Africa team, that's for sure. They need to get the ball into her hands in space. They'll struggle South Africa against Russia. Russia very, very strong in the breakdown. Tend to starve teams of good quality possession. The line out to Russia. The underhand toss going to come. The lift as Kudnova taps it away. And Kukina, I believe. Marina Kukina. It's just that easy sometimes. Too easy, really, for Russia there. The South African defense nowhere to be seen. It was a poor line out, actually, from Russia. But even then, here we go. Poor, can't really get their hands on the ball. Kudinova does just enough. And Kukina looks up, really, no defense in front of her. South African defense too disorganized. The 21 year old Kukina playing for the Moscow region, the debut in China last year. And the easy five points for Russia and a 12 0 lead. As that one was converted. So it has not started well for South Africa. Looking at the season for the box in Dubai, they lost the bowl final to Brazil and Sao Paulo. Dropped uh, that 11th place game to China and then did it again in Atlanta. So they've had a a bit of a tough tour so far as uh, Matrin Simers to Jordan. Gadu on the outside. That one spills and Russia is on it. Kazakova at the bottom of the pile. 
Stepping through is Bogacheva. And Elena Bogacheva had a try against the U.S. and still on her feet. Persistent, I tell you. Meanwhile, the bounce to Kudnova is not going to end well. And with the knock on, the scrum to South Africa. Yeah, she just couldn't gather it. Kudinova, such a such a crucial player for this team. 11 tournaments, 250 points, tries and kicks in there. That time, though, the error came, handed the ball to South Africa. A little over two and a half to go in this first half, and Russia holding a 12 0 advantage. Varuska Grain. Bernard and Sunel taken down by Bethelova. Come the right side to Jackie Creel. Back goes Fumesa Gadu. Gadu under the grip of Kasakova goes down. Bernard trying to keep it in as she was pressured by Makariamova. Eldenes. Right at halfway. Zane Jordan. To grind. And South Africa. The forward pass will send it Russia's way on this run. Patient defense from Russia and, and a really pressing defense. So that's Africa looking up, trying to move the ball wide, and all they can see and is big white shirts. Nah, probably uh, intelligent philosophy there that, you know what, these guys are having trouble, and we will kind of let them injure themselves with the ball, as it were, if we can just reorganize and stay defensively, keep our shape. Kudin over the put in, and... Just over a minute to go and a 12 0 lead. There's one minute left in this half. Kazakova, Kazakova gets the corner and Kazakova taken down inside the 22. Recycled by Russia as Makuriamova. Bogacheva dropped down. Back it comes to Makuriamova with the fend, and she's going to cross it over and give Russia a 17 0 lead. Again, really disorganized defense from South Africa. And Anastasia Makuriamova looks up, there's no one in front of her. So, what are you going to do? Run forward. Eventually, the tackle starts to, it starts to come in, but look, she looks up, and there's just nobody there. So, she pins her head down. Defense can't reach her, and she's in. So Russia in that seventh spot, and there's a lot of folks that think uh, that probably isn't where they should be. As you look, they lost the bowl final to the U.S. at Dubai and then won the bowl over Brazil at Sao Paulo. And the conversion missed, and then Atlanta lost the third place game to Canada. Yeah, it's so tight in those fourth to seventh places with England, Russia, USA, France, really, really tight. Any one of those can beat the other on, a, on their day. 17 to nothing, Russia, and Pavel Baranovsky ready for his halftime. <laughs> And the beauty of all that is he does it on one breath. <laughs> the coaching manual says tell your team one or two simple things at halftime because they won't take in anything else. Pavel does it differently, but it certainly seems to work for this Russian team. There is no question. Is uh, holding a passion for the game and his team being in it. And he conveys that at the intermission. 
There is uh, the youngster, Daria Fehalova, the 19-year-old making her debut on tour. Matherin Simmers awaiting the kick. And picked up by Russia. Kazakova to Bogacheva. Bogacheva giving it back to Kazakova, and it's just as easy as that. I love you, you love me. Here, go across the line, BV. Very good skill from Bogacheva. That offload managed, the way she managed to pull it back to get the ball into the hands of Kazakova. We'll see it here. Go from Kazakova to Bogacheva, but then here, pulling it back into the hands of Kazakova. Lovely offload and an easy finish for a woman who has scored a lot of tries on this series. Certainly has, and in the Rugby World Cup 7 with uh, four of them. And Russia eschewing the conversion and saying, let's get right back to it so we can hit each other. And so they do with a 22 to nothing lead. Taking her eye off the ball was uh, Simmers, and the turnover goes to Russia. Yeah, Russia Kind of interesting, though, Sue. I mean, you don't usually go, okay, we're not going to try one from here. No, I mean, I guess because it's quite far out wide, they thought the chances were slim. They clearly want to get as many points on the board as possible for the points difference. So they're saying, thanks very much. We'll have an extra 40 seconds to try and score tries. I knew there was a reason. Now. I knew if I came to you with your encyclopedic knowledge, as we have a uh, substitution. Anna Malagina wearing the six comes in, so does uh, Maria Shemchuk in the seven for Russia. Interesting though, if they're trying to maximize points, taking off probably the two best finishers on the pitch in Hamidova and Kazakova. And Shemchuk. Come back the other way. Bernard on the bounce to grind. Into the hands of Bogacheva, who goes swinging round and round. Simmers. Hell the nice. Sinazo Nobelli. South Africa. With the exception of uh, Fumé Zagadu in that try against the USA, so far has uh, been outscored 109 to 5. And I am throwing in that five point try by Zagadu. Nobelli tries to get the corner on Makuri Amova. Jackie Creel in the back in this corner looking for an opportunity to get a shoe back on that fell off about 30 seconds ago. There she is, <laughs> the picture. Fortunately, now the penalty's called and she's the player with the ball. She can take her chance. She was she was thinking Velcro right then, wasn't she? <laughs> the old the old three straps. Can you get that for me? As the conversation with Jess Beard, Daria Lashina, the 18-year-old, making her debut on the tour, wearing the two, headed out there. Bogacheva with the fend on. Nobelli. Shemchuk. Back it goes the other way. Kukina. The yellow booted Guzeva and Yulia. Holding on too long and off it goes in South Africa's favor. With just over three minutes to go. Taken by Conrad, Kristen Conrad, who is uh, debuting for the box. 
where in the eight is Conrad under 20 player with some pace is the word we didn't really get a chance to see it there if she'd have cleanly come up with that one it might have been interesting now the handling skills of South Africa is just not crisp enough so the pacey players aren't getting the ball in enough space Golden Ace, Barnard, and Creel. Conrad on the line to Nobelli. Grain flung down by Bogacheva. So they come back the other way. Tatova takes down Krell. Nobelli leaving it. For Grain. Gazeva with the tackle. Get 22 to nothing. And Russia with possession. Heldenice with the big lift and hit, but not rolling away. So awarded to Russia with a minute and 46 to go. Yeah, lost a lot of continuity this game now. Ball getting handed back and forth between the teams. Penalty after penalty. See what Russia can put together here. They're going to redo that as uh, South Africa came a charge in a bit early. They'd argue a bit of a dummy, I think. <laughs> yes, exactly. Shemchuk taken down. One outside is Lucina and Daria does a full roll before getting rid of that one. A minute to go. There's one minute sitting on a victory. The question is what the score will be. Yeah, all the changes that Russia have made, it seems to have really disrupted the team. There's a lot of space out wide, and they're just not getting into the spaces at the moment. Taking too long to make the passes, not getting aligned in the right places in the first. Five. Just ahead, our last match of the day, and it looks to be a pretty good one on paper. Canada and the USA. Scott Hastings, Garrett, Garrett Reese will be there for you. Elden Ace up high is Kukina on the tackle, but Aligina comes in to help out, bringing it a bit lower and Simmers. Creel. Drying as the Hooter goes and Bogacheva with the grab there. Got a chance, South Africa. Barnard. Heldene spins it back to the youngster Conrad and then to Simmers. Simmers back to Conrad, and the kid can go over. No! South Africa with a try. And the rookie, Kristen Conrad, the 18 year old making her debut. Welcome to the big. The team's so pleased with her. She gets the ball down. There. Yes, she does. She gets it down, and then you can see the team so pleased for her. First try in a World Series career. What a moment for her. And for good measure, she's going to convert it herself. Oh, come on, slotted. I have no interest in this. I am the Switzerland of announcers, but let's see if she can put this one through. <laughs> 18 years old, what a moment. Oh! Somebody put a little fudge on the birthday case. All right, that'll do it. A 22 to five victory for Russia over South Africa. A happy day for Kirsten Conrad, at least on the finish there with her first try. Something that more closely resembles a bus. Car cool, car trips, and car cool trips. You can make car mishaps. That's why we give you the kind of 
service we expect for ourselves. Canadian Direct Insurance. Friends of Canada Women's Sevens at West Hill Stadium is proudly presented by the Butchart Gardens. Rugby Canada would like to thank the Butchart Gardens for their continued support. Butchart Gardens, over 100 years in blue. So the final game here on day one in Pool C will pit Canada versus uh, the United States. Both these teams will go through to the knockout section tomorrow on day two here of the women's seven series in Langford, West Hill Stadium. And depending on the other outcomes of the uh, other pools, we'll work out the uh, mathematics, which will. Uh, Take us the top seedings from one down to through the quarterfinals tomorrow. Well, a good crowd has stayed within the West Hill Stadium, and my name's Scott Hastings. Alongside me is uh, Gareth Reese, and uh, Gareth, it's been a thoroughly entertaining day, and uh, what a way to finish off game 18. One more game, Canada versus the United States. A great head-to-head, -head, and uh, the reason I'm sitting in the commentary box with you is that if Bill Seward had been alongside you, we didn't want to have any fighting <laughs> between USA and Canada. Well, you Scots have got the English, the Aussies have got the Kiwis, we've got the Americans, Canada and America. It's our sporting rivalry, and this is going to be a great one. Well, Jocelyn Landry scored a hat-trick in the, uh, the last game against uh, South Africa. She retains her place in the starting lineup. Ashley Stacey captains this Canadian team. For the United States, it's Kelly Griffin who captains the States team, but keep an eye out for uh, Victoria for Lyon. The flying for Lyon has scored a number of tries here. <laughs> and well, uh, here's that little sign there. Was that, was that That's a Caleb Militia, Williams Lakes, pride and joy. Caleb Militia comes from Williams Lake, which is a town, a small ranching town in Northern British Columbia. And I think half of them are right there in the stands, waiting to watch this one. Canada versus USA at Evans. Well, Canada have claimed the halfway spot already. Then as she goes. Ashley Stacey, the captain, the player of the year. In an awards ceremony on Thursday night in Government House. And, uh, well, one, two, one, two, three. we'll be happy on top of that ball. Yeah, and a big challenge here for the Canadians. How do they manage their emotions? They know this is important. They know they've worked long and hard to play at home. Referee Alhambra Nivas from Spain will be in the middle. And we've seen a change within this Canadian side because when you consider the likes of Mandy Marcha, Magalie Harvey is not selected. Of course, the, end, the uh, injury to Jen Kish has been a factor, but they've responded, Gareth, this Canadian team, playing with lots of confidence. They have, and this American team were perhaps guilty of uh, taking Russia too lightly. They just dodged a bullet there, so Rick Suggett's women will want to improve on that. These teams know each other very well. well Lauren Doyle was uh, wearing the scrum cap there in your shot. And, uh, well, this should be a feisty old encounter between two old arrivals. Megan Bonnie delivered the pass into Lela Alev Kelter. That pass not going to hand. As I said, these teams know each other very well. They spend January of each year training together down in Chula Vista in San Diego, the USA Olympic Training Center. They have a three-game series, and uh, there is... Lots of familiarity. Ashley Stacey will feed the scum for Canada. Behind is Bianca Farella. We've not seen too much of Farella. Her pace uh, is a feature of this Canadian side, but uh, others have stepped up in the mark. And talking about stepping up in the mark, Kayla Maleshi has been one of the standout players for this set Canadian team. Hakan goes into secure ball. Farella down that blind side to the most experienced player, Kelly Russell. Tackled. On those channels, Stacey has the backup. Stacey's not held. She goes for the try. Try time for Stacey. The captain goes over, but it's a great team try. Working the narrow channel, using the mix of pace and power. There's Farella. Stacey's first touch. Big Kelly Russell riding the tackle. Driving the legs, she goes down, but has the presence to offload. 
Stacy's there immediately, and here, not held, so she has the right to dive over the line. Great first strike for Canada. So the uh, conversion was uh, unsuccessful. Ashley Stacy, when having scored for the Canadians, unlike the 15s game shield kickoff to the United States team. Justin Landry with the uh, misconversion attempt. Kelly Griffin looks on for the United States. Uh, big jump there from Kelly Russell. Balls into the grasp of Kelly Moleshi. She's been everywhere in the two ties that uh, Canada played beforehand. Pakan, Pakan up <laughs> through the middle. This is solid play. The offload is coming. Ashley Stacey has to struggle to get ball, but the hint of a knock on. And Karen Pakan, what a run she had there, slicing through the United States defense. We've seen her be a massive presence in defense, a big physical unit. But there in attack, she showed great foot speed. Not able to link up with Britt Ben outside her. Yeah, Lev Kelter will uh, put the ball in the scrum here for the United States team. Well, she had to juggle with the ball and back to try and gather as uh, Baravirivá. Oh, lovely play here for the United States, Lauren Doyle. And Doyle, is she going to go the length? She is. And will she get under and near the post for the additional two points? Doyle, with a wonderful length of the field try for the United yes. States, brings back and squares the scores at five piece. Well, so often the case when a team bobbles the ball, the defense is a little bit upset. The ball goes over the top, and Lauren Doyle spots the space she needs with her pace. She knows she's got the beating of the cover and goes a full 90 meters to get USA on the board here. Well, that's her fourth try this afternoon. Let's see if the... Uh, the kick is successful. No, it's not. So that, the score is tied at five apiece. And that little extra effort from Landry to keep her out that 15 meters wide keeps the scores level as the conversion was that much more difficult. Now, Liv Kelter, she retains her place in uh, Rick Suggett's side after she impressed in the tournament in Atlanta. This is a women's seven series event. It's just in Landry. Well, she just hoofs one down the pitch. This will be covered, however, by uh, Victorian Falayan. Falayan sets up over the halfway line. Ball grasp out there, but Baravilala. Baravilala goes up the uh, short side track, but tackled on this occasion by Brittany Ben. So there's the tackles going in thick and fast from Brittany Devent. And listen to the crowd getting behind the Canadians. The home crowd here in the West Hills Stadium. Right in front of that West Hills crowd. Kelly Russell to Stacey, Bianca Farella, Brittany Ben cuts an angle to Gislin Landry. Landry on the switch plate. Farella has to go in. Stacey is guddling for the ball, but an offside by Alhambra and Nives, the uh, referee from uh, Spain. Yeah, strange call there. The American called for a midfield offside. So it kind of looked like they may lose possession, but now we'll have the chance to set something up. It's interesting in the women's game of sevens that they don't kick for touch. They always attack through ball in hand. Pass out to uh, Baca and the, uh, on the outside. Graduate from Vicente's High School in Quebec. Ashley Stacey, such a busy little player. Loose pass, however. And Canada cough up possession on that far side. Miscommunication between the Canadians, no one knew who wanted it. So Kelter will have a great opportunity to throw the ball in. Kelter, who plays scrum half, that the great transition within the game is that they also, also the scrum half play and acts as a hooker throwing the ball in. Of course, it used to be wingers that used to throw <laughs> the ball in in the 15s rugby. Falayan up to the 10 metre line, not held in the tackle, places the ball back. Baravirala caught there at the base. Stacey goes in. Yeah, that was an interesting moment there. Canada thought they turned it over. The referee's going to play the knock on. 
Scott, I gotta say, this feels like an ice hockey match, which you're, if you're from <laughs> these parts, that's about as intense as it gets, Canada, USA. Great crowd here. Biancat Farrell attacks. Brittany Ben. Brittany Ben, strong running. Gets the offload there to Jason Landry. Landry chased down there by Lauren Doyle. But Landry shrugs off the attempted tackle for Doyle. Ducks the ball down. And Canada will go in the halftime. Two tries to the better over the one for USA. Well, Britt Ben does the damage. She attacks two defenders. And just offloads before she goes to ground. But Landry had some work to do here. Boyle, we know, has pace. Came across. Went too high with the hand grab. And Landry pawned her off. Landry got three tries in the first half of the last match and continues service here. Well, a good additional two points comes in from Jason Landry. <laughs> I wonder if Sandra Fiorano, the assistant coach, is saying, hey, how about no more kicks, giving possession away? Well, halftime here. He's Canada leading the United States by that converted try. Let's listen to John Tate. Three. You always bring the Great kickoffs. Nice contestable. We'll, we'll get them. Keep going after them. Right? Uh, just one, one thing. Right? We've got to watch for that narrow floater on defense. Right? So we're on the outside. Let's start talking before it's set. Right? Get that B and C set. Right? And you know, if it's going to Vix, she's going to step and just prime power through tackles. So commit to the tackle on her. Okay? Right? We just we threw 150 50 and it got away and, and, and it leads to a turn. Just build patience. I know you feel the excitement and we want to score every time we get it. Yeah. We will score when we get it if we keep the ball. Okay? Yeah. Patience. Interesting, they know each other so well. Vix, if it's going to Vix, that's Victoria Falloy, and of course, the danger runner for the US. And uh, John Tate, very calm there, very content. Interesting dynamic between these two coaches. Rick Saget leading this group. He was actually head coach of Canada's men's sevens, and John Tate was still playing. John, a second row uh, for Cardiff and Breve and European rugby, and a fine servant to Canada. Was picked for one and only sevens tournament to go to Dubai, and that was Rick Saget, his opposing coach today, who picked him. Well, guys, we've had wonderful uh, greenery in around the uh, the stadium here, but also the greenery and colour of Butchant Gardens as well. And uh, well, it's a magnificent tourist. I know the the Butchant Gardens have supported this tournament, and uh, we are. Um, well, I was up there the other day in the most beautiful setting, and uh, one of uh, Victoria Island's. Uh, most we'll stay fabulous fabulous gardens yeah great great support from them in this community could bring this kind of international sport to the community on vancouver island great to see well wherever you are from throughout the world we hope you're enjoying all the uh, the action in canada rugby well they've certainly laid down a marker because they've been supported by the local community they've been supported by the sponsors and if canada continue to play cracking rugby like this well they're going to have to build a new stadium. Pakan goes in on the tackle of Catherine Johnson. Balls back, Doyle. Doyle had the opportunity to offload. Balls back, picked up. Oh, it was a lovely pick up by Kelter. Kelter on that 10 meter line. Turnover ball for Canada. Bianca Ferella. As Packer on the outside steps inside Catherine Johnson. Johnson holds on. Varela will spread play to this far side. Picked up by Stacy. Brittany Ben. Well, she shrugged off one tackle. For Lyon nails Brittany Ben with a thumping tackle. But Ben didn't release the ball and was penalized accordingly. Kelly Griffin just taps and goes for the United States. Great offload and pick up by Megan Bonney. And Megan Bonney has pulled one back for Canada. Ding dong from Megan <laughs> Bonney and Langford. Well, there's some tired bodies out there, and it's two Americans who responded. Kelly Griffin with the quick tap, and then Megan Bonney pouncing on this pass. 
scoring, but scoring out wide significantly. A tough conversion looming for the Americans. So Canada leading by 12 points to 10. The kick is to come. The two points would square the sides. Deep breath in. Barapilada misses the uh, two points. So well, it's on a knife edge here. Super try by Megan Bond. Neither side backing down here. Great response from the U.S. team. Akilani, Barapilada from the All Blues of Bahia. 23-year-old kicks off. Ball knocked on by Catherine Johnson, was it? No, says Alamra Nives, the uh, Span Spanish uh, referee. Kelly Griffin, Griffin, well tackled there in a double tackle. Bianca Ferella and Ashley Stacy. Victor for Lyon. For Lyon gets the offload onto the try scorer Megan Borney inside there. Possession returned and retained by this United States team. Catherine Johnson, Johnson throws the wide pass, Doyle's on the wide outside channel. Doyle goes for the corner and Landry went in for a tackle and that was rather reckless from uh, Landry on that far side, using her feet and Doyle's taking a knock to the face. Looks like she may have something in her eye or was it a boot? But Landry also guilty of giving Doyle far too much pace, space, sorry, we saw her pace. And as this ball bounces, Landry needs to take away that sideline. She just got wrong-footed. That was the boot. I'm not quite sure what she had in mind. There's the bouncing ball. Doyle has got 50 meters to work with, and she just sets her up and then takes her outside. Canada per that. perhaps lucky to not be one short yeah, after that Aaron boot. It looked as though uh, she tried to go in and kick the ball and dislodge, which obviously would be illegal and reckless within the uh, laws of uh, rugby. So United States and the, and the blonde there, blonde here, I should say. Yeah, don't forget that there's Jenny Kish in the middle, not available today. Don't forget we're only two hours from the border in near Seattle, that area, so lots of Americans here as well. Well, I can tell you the atmosphere around the ground is <laughs> absolutely bubbling. Canada, can they get themselves back into this tie? They're trailing by that uh, three points. Bianca Farella. Farella well marshaled there by the United States. Lauren Doyle. Kelly Russell delivers a pass. Now there's an extra player on the wide outside, Lisa Alari. A Larry up to the halfway line. Natasha Watchamroy, two tries in the previous win over South Africa. Pakan, Pakan, strong. Has she got the support of Landry on the inside? Gislin Landry, hello! Landry is exhausted. She's worked the whole half. Great scenes here at Canada Sevens. But how about Karen Packham? Whenever this Canadian side needs someone to put it on their back, she does it. She squares up her defender, steps inside one, looks to offload, and then keeps driving through, creates the overlap, and then takes out the sweeper. And Landry works hard in support and has just enough gas to get over the line to give Canada the lead again. Kids on the clock. What's the response for the United States? Pakan goes up, picked up by Kelly Russell. Russell steps back in, gives a pass. Just a rally for the corner. Brilliant tackle on that far side by the United States Doyle, who just lodges the ball out of Ferella. Melissa Alari is asking that it was knocked out of her hand. Not going to get the penalty. 
So the U.S. will have the remaining 15 seconds here. U.S. will have to attack from deep. But Avellada, she'll throw the ball in here. Of course, play will go on. The referee will decide until the ball goes out of play. Doyle hits it to Falayan. Falayan against Farella. Tackle's good, though. Farella stuck with her opposite number and eventually held up. But a penalty for not releasing the tick. Quick tap and go by Baravillala. Griffin comes back in. Knock on, was it? No, it was not backwards. Canada, turnover ball. Kelly Russell's got the ball. Pakan kicks the ball. Oh. Victory for Canada by 19 points to 15. What a cracking in to day one here in the city of Langford. And what a day of action we've had. These two teams will both head into the quarterfinals. But Canada, they get the bragging rights. They've won here in what has been a brilliant sevens tie. And Gareth, fantastic action here. Both teams contributed to 14 minutes of wonderful sevens rugby. Did they ever. The whole game was on a knife edge. Ashley Stacey trying to lead her troops in the red jerseys. The Americans in white responded admirably. Great tries from both teams. A finish that went right down to the last play of the game. And that woman there, Gisele Landry, got the all-important winning try for Canada. Great action, great scenes, great fans. And we're going to do it all again tomorrow, Scotty. <laughs> yep. Brittany Bell. Doyle led the way. Pakan with the assist pass for Gislin Landry, who ran in for the winning try for Canada. Well, congratulations from uh, the crowd. Well, still a few tickets left for tomorrow, so if you are watching up in uh, Vancouver or Victoria or on Vancouver Island, why don't you come down to the West Hill Stadium, the city centre park in the city of Langford, and come and enjoy this wonderful and magical sport of seven aside rugby. It's selfie time, Scott. Quick they guys, let's it. see if we can get down there and bomb that photograph. <laughs> Happy days for Canada rugby. So let's set, have a look how the pools are wrapped up. So New Zealand topped the pool, of course, that game-winning streak, 33 games unbeaten, Gareth. There was a cracking time between them and England, but it will be those three teams, New Zealand, England and Fiji, who will progress through to the uh, knockout stages tomorrow. Yeah, New Zealand still the class of this field with so many individual weapons that can cause problems. In Pool B, Australia were outstanding throughout the day. They only conceded one try to in the final game on day one here. France will also be through to the uh, quarterfinals. And finally, pool three, the round robins. Canada, as you can see, topped the pool against United States. I think if my batteries are working in my calculator, Russia will get through to the knockout stages tomorrow. Thank you, Canada. So the cup final, qu cup quarterfinal draw for tomorrow. We'll pit Australia, the number one speed, against Russia. USA against France. <laughs> Canada against England and New Zealand against Fiji. Sude just elbowed me in the ribs, Scotty. What great action ahead. Well, that's it. All the action over on day one. Join us again tomorrow for more action here on the uh, Women's Rugby 7 Series.